recorded live. Good evening, folks. This is David Clarence, expressly reserving all liberties. A notary on the land, York County, Nation, Pennsylvania, near the uh, <clears throat> barfly and Fested uh, Corporation County of York and uh, Commonwealth of Pennsylvania Corporation, and a host for a Voice of Freedom broadcast on TalkShoe.com. Uh, you may contact me by emailing me as County Notary, all one word, C O U N T Y N O T A R Y at gmail that's god mail and our god is almighty yahweh uh, this is uh, the end of sabah uh, sabbath uh, in the world it's known as the seder day uh, march the 6th 2010 uh, this subject of this evening's broadcast is Timothy shows why Eustace Mons was half wrong and tie in the peso and the dollar to uh, his research and uh, I'm not going to really discuss that because <laughs> I'm looking for Tim to pop in here when he can he's uh, at work and uh, has to pry himself away. Uh, let's see, I'll talk about something uh, similar. Well, to all the secrets. That'll make everybody happy. <laughs> uh, uh, well, let me tell you this war story first. Um, I was uh, we went in town, I think it was Tuesday or Wednesday morning. And uh, I could start. I got uh, downtown a little bit, and uh, I happened to notice one of these tent signs. They, these merchants like to put up on the sidewalk now and uh, obstruct uh, wheelchair passage and things like that across the street. And uh, they had a clearance sale advertised. So. Uh, I read that sign, and in a, being the wise uh, acre that I normally am, I I just couldn't resist myself. So I I stopped, turned around, looked for traffic, and uh, ran across the uh, the street there. Got on the sidewalk on the other side, went up to the window, uh, large plate glass window, of this uh, retail uh, clothing. Uh, uh, establishment and knocked on the window and uh, a woman inside uh, she looked and I motioned for her to come out it's not wheelchair accessible they have steps there and uh, she came out and she says uh, good morning I said hello she's going to help you I said you sure can I'll take a half a dozen <laughs> and she said uh, a, a half a dozen I said yes she said a half a dozen of what? I says ladies. Uh, she she said what? I said well you have a sign right there on the sidewalk that says ladies clearance. I said I'll have I'll take a half a dozen and you don't have to wrap them up. I like my ladies butt naked. Well, <laughs> she just turned around and walked back in the store. I waited out there for about twenty minutes. You know that rascal never did bring my order out. And. Uh, but I noticed uh, the sign's been gone ever since that. So uh, I guess the, uh, the clearance on ladies is now at an end. That probably explains why she didn't bring them out. Uh, they had run out, depleted their inventory. But um, in either case, uh, brevity aside this evening... Um, I'd like to uh, talk about a couple of things uh, that went on this week. One was um, 
I was provided with a broadcast uh, recording by Sam Kennedy, the alias Sam Kennedy. Uh, and it would seem that this was uh, recorded earlier this this week or possibly last week uh, on a talk show in Dallas, Texas. And uh, the alias uh, Sam Kennedy was being interviewed by the host. And the subject was this... Uh, the Restore America or Trap or I guess the, the new uh, name they've come up with is just uh, Restore uh, America Plan or Rap so whichever it is the Trap or the Rap uh, he was discussing this and there was uh, there were several, several interesting uh, revelations in that broadcast, uh, first of which, uh, the alias Sam Kennedy is the is the author of the plan, which I had taken that for granted since uh, the other so-called uh, elders uh, do not have the uh, writing pose to produce something like that. And uh, it has uh, the alias uh, Sam Kennedy's uh, signature all over it. And uh, I'm trying to think of uh, what some of the other points were he made in there. One one that sticks out in my mind most is that uh, he made the statement that any patriot who doesn't sign on for this trap rap is a coward. Now, uh, since he's the spokesman for the uh, so-called guardian aid elders uh, of the uh, trap rap, I take it that uh, let's see, let's not let me name them: uh, Regan Reedy, Tom Schultz, Tim Turner, Sam Davis. And uh, either Glenn Richard Unger or uh, the alias Sam Kennedy uh, is stating that if any patriot who does not sign on to the trap rap is a coward. Now, I haven't had an opportunity to discuss this with uh, Sam Davis, but I'm going to do that. And uh, I have a personal problem with uh, the alias uh, Sam Kennedy making that statement. I don't per se consider myself to be a patriot, whatever that is. But uh, the things that I've experienced um, personally in my life the uh, last uh, 38 years or so were not for my own exclusive benefit. And um, I, I just like to uh, get my hands around his cotton pick and Adam's apple <clears throat> and then give him an opportunity to say that to my face. Um, what, what's going on there, folks, is uh, they, with these broadcasts, I'm, I don't listen to them. I'm getting reports of them that uh, the alias Sam Kennedy puts on every Sunday evening. After listening to this broadcast, he gets his material. Uh, they seem to be desperate for people to sign on to this uh, trap rap. Uh, reports I'm getting is that they can't find 27 uh, knuckleheads in, in the... Uh, each one of the 50 corporate states is stupid enough to sign this thing. And it appears as though they're uh, they're getting desperate. I've heard one report now where they've uh, uh, backed off on the deadline, uh, reduced it, uh, 
rather revised it that it's no longer the 31st, it's now earlier than the 31st of, of March. Um, but uh, they're doing that to uh, create this uh, impression of an emergency. See, in the uh, last, uh, uh, what's the big uh, retail merchant uh, promotion? Uh, last day, you know, three days only, your last chance to get this deal and such things as that. Um, so they'll, <clears throat> they're creating this. That's what they did with setting this deadline to start with, was to... Uh, <clears throat> they figured they'd get 27, I guess, signatures uh, in each one of the uh, corporate states, and uh, I could certainly get them by the <clears throat> March the 31st. And so... Uh, they felt uh, confident that by setting a, an artificial deadline like that that uh, they could get people to rush in and sign on to it without e reading the document, knowing what they're signing up for. And by doing that, they just set themselves up for failure. And now they're trying to revise and... Uh, uh, Cajole people into signing this thing that uh, obviously they're not doing uh, in sufficient numbers to uh, make whatever it is they're trying to do uh, operate or, or work for them. It's not going to work anyway. But uh, uh, that if that gets around on the internet enough, uh, if I had a, I'm thinking about. I guess I can't really post that uh, that broadcast, but maybe I can locate a uh, link to it in that Dallas, uh, Texas uh, talk show uh, episode. You folks can go on there and listen for yourself. And uh, I mean, I was just floored. I couldn't believe it. Uh, I think there was at least one other individual that was floored also. But I won't uh, discuss that. I'll let that up to them to do on their own broadcast. But um, um, I'm getting a, a lot of emails from folks that have signed on to this uh, Tony King uh, Black Ops operation and are regretting it. Uh, and they're asking how they can undo what they did, and uh, I really don't have an answer for you. Uh, I I don't know what you did to begin with. I haven't seen what uh, what documents you may have signed or or submitted. Uh, it it would appear to me that you can uh, transmit. Uh, a registered uh, mail demand that uh, the birth certificate and the social security card be returned immediately. And I'm not telling you to do that. And uh, as I said last week, I'm not even suggesting that anyone not do uh, get involved with this uh, alias uh, Tony King black ops operation that's up to you whether you do or not what what can be done if you can't undo it uh, we really don't know but th this is my feeling uh, Timothy agrees with me based on principles and maxims of law the assets of that trust are property of that trust and uh they uh, they they should be uh able to be recovered if there's any type of of uh fraud or anything involved in uh, transferring trust property um, that's uh, kind of our feeling on on that subject until we 
look into it uh, in more detail ourselves. So can't give you a better answer than that or or even suggest what you should do. Um, could be that it may work out for you um, or it may not um, depending on on your life circumstances you know. but uh, it, it doesn't appear as though there's anything good going to come out of that so uh, those are kind of the two subjects generally I can, can cover tonight um, we haven't learned anything new or uh, developed anything new regarding our project of uh, recapturing this vessel and its cargo this week. It's, uh, it's been one of those weeks that are kind of non-productive, waiting uh, for something to happen and uh, expectation. Uh, we were assured that something would happen and and it hasn't, but uh, it's not a. It, it doesn't seem to be a big deal because uh, these entities or parties that we're dealing with have uh, misestimated the time frames uh, involved before. So it probably doesn't mean anything. And besides, it's all in in Yahweh's uh, time anyway things will take place uh, according to his will so it's it's not uh, upsetting or uh, a concern of any type or anything like that Uh, non of fictions asking me if uh, if I did not complete the trust that was left in its infancy at birth I, uh, I'm going to read into his, what he's stating here how was I able to press the issue with the so called powers or the DTC uh, you're asking me question, specific questions about a subject that I can't give you an answer to uh, we've already discussed that in um, at least two previous broadcasts. Uh, but we uh, we still feel that, that uh, completing that trust uh, is paramount, and, and it may still be. We're, we're either at the at the uh, uh, the end of this uh, journey that I can only describe as a uh, national uh, treasure quest or we're, or we're somewhere between the middle and the end of it it's, uh, it's just uh, that's an unknown when we get to the end of it then I will have a better understanding of exactly everything that's involved and then I'll, or Timothy or I, or or there's others uh, working on this, uh, will be in a better position to give uh, an opinion uh, as to uh, what the uh, finishing the trust would do compared to what we've been doing, been led to to do by uh, Yahweh Father. And at that point, uh, I'll give you uh, that opinion. And then we are st at this point are still uh, planning on on doing a trust completion and uh, experiment on somebody. It ought to be someone other than myself, probably. Uh, we'll, we'll see. And then what the outcomes of that will be. And uh, uh, what the uh, merits or uh, uh, positives uh, can result from folks uh, taking that route and doing that 
uh, although we're uh, we're hesitant to just wholesale uh, publish information that can allow people to uh, obtain access to virtually unlimited financial resources because of the of the harm it can cause to them or others. Um, it it may very well be um, that we all have a right to to know how to um, complete this trust uh, instrument uh, granting that was begun in the uh, delivery room. Uh, it's um, if if everyone had. Uh, the motivation to sacrifice their life and and uh, do something similar to what I've done and virtually spend a half of a lifetime researching and learning this uh, what what we know and uh, ex experience what we've experienced, then you all would probably be able to do this. Um, you may even be able to get a a, a cotton picking bar fly or somebody to draw you up a a trust document or uh, find one yourself. Um, actually, the lawyers uh, very seldom do they create any documents that they use in their business of law. They're uh, either uh, straight out of a, a a forms book um that you can find in any large law library a state library or a university's uh law school library uh where uh they have a s substantial uh collection of law books they'll find forms books in their collection that are similar to a set of encyclopedias, only uh, maybe a ring binder or, or not. They could be hard, just hardbound. And you'll find forms in there. Uh, you star six and mute yourself out. I'm echoing back, please. Uh, you'll find virtually every form in there that an attorney... Utilizes in their normal practice of uh, filing uh, petitions and motions and and uh, actually uh, lawsuits and and uh, different things and probably although I've never specifically looked for them I'm sure you can find examples of of uh, trust instruments you then need to get with someone that's either uh, an attorney uh, or a long-time paralegal or someone learned in the law and somebody that's not going to charge you outrageous rate uh, to uh, customize that uh, form uh, for your use. If that's in fact the route you want to go rather than wait for us to experiment with this and then uh, post a boilerplate form on the Google group that uh, we'll have used and we'll know what the outcome of that is, has, uh, has been. So um, it's kind of our thoughts on that. We don't recommend that you go out and just copy and paste something. Uh, th this is anyone that's been involved with trust and trust law will tell you that it's not something you should just haphazardly do no matter what your circumstance is and what you perceive to be a uh, uh non-choice uh, 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 
you know, emergency situation or this and that uh, or anything else. If you do this incorrectly, you could potentially cause more more harm to yourself than you are good. Um, you, you've just got to know what you're doing and know what should be in that document, what you can and can't put in there. And if you don't, you could potentially uh, put something in there that will nullify the trust. And and it won't work for you, and and then you won't know why. Uh, they they're not going to uh, uh, send you some type of um, advisory uh, advising you that you've made a critical error in the trust instrument, and thereby nullified it, and uh, and suggesting what you should do and what that uh, error might be. They're, you're just not going to get any help like that. It just won't work for you. Or it could uh, uh, just potentially be detrimental to the estate in in some way or some fashion. So it's, it's not something we would advise you to just do if you don't know what you're doing. Or pay one of these patriots for profit outrageous fees or attend a seminar, uh, I'm sure somebody's going to come up with some kind of a seminar about this sooner or later and uh, start on the old uh, seminar racket uh, with it, especially if it works. <laughs> uh, but uh, just be patient. Uh, learn to do what I've done, and that's be unbelievably patient sometimes. Uh, uh, at least in, within my perception of unbelievable, and just wait for uh, Yahweh Father's uh, time and ask Him to handle it for you. Minimize the uh, situation, the ramifications of the situation you're dealing with now. So, and uh, I'm sure there's folks out there that are getting uh, probably tired of me hearing me uh, mention uh, Yahweh and Yeshua on his broadcast, especially if you're commerce-minded folks and uh, you come into this broadcast or the archives uh, looking for the pot of gold and uh, golden fleece and so on and so forth. But I'm going to say this again. I'm just not just to say it, but to emphasize and remind you that our worldly ways and our worldly concepts and uh, our uh, understanding of uh, of our Creator and how He operates and what you do to uh, access that uh, resource, it's been... Uh, taught to us by these uh, damnable religious systems is uh, not served you well in your lifetime uh, as well as it should in either case. And we would suggest again that you use the sacred names and uh, in all things and uh, shun these uh, organized religious uh, terminology that's used, concepts. It will pay large dividends, folks. It has for me for uh, uh, over 19 years, and uh, and I'm not. 
just talking about this uh, estate issue and all all things in my life. Blessed is the only uh, description I can think of that, uh, that applies adequately. And Timothy, where are you at here tonight? Tied up. Well, it's hopefully a good thing that uh, you're busy. Uh, business is good. And uh, and I'm sure you'll get here. Uh, come on as soon as you're able to. Would have been here already if uh, if you were able. Uh, gosh, I didn't really think of a subject tonight for anything other than I was going to uh, deal with some rascals that we postponed because of what uh, <clears throat> Timothy's been uncovering all week uh, long. And I really don't want to get into that because when uh he can make it in here and and explain to you uh exactly what he's found and what's going on i don't want you to hear it one way from me and another way from him, and he has a better understanding of it than I do. Because it deals with uh, you know, commerce uh, issues, uh, Federal Reserve, and but the past two days he's been uh, hot on Admiralty Law and uh, the things that he's found through a uh, thesis that was written by a law professor on Admiralty Law and what it shows and things like that. Part of what it has to do with is uh, an issue that we uh, we have used in the removals that we were doing uh, back in 2007. And then it was uh, plagiarized and Attempted to be used by uh, Rod Class and uh, Maria Shoemaker in their AIB uh, broadcasts and efforts. It's called the Foreign Sovereign Immunities Act. It's found in uh, Title 28, United States Code, uh, 1600. Uh, uh, Section uh, maybe 1641 or something like that. It might start uh, that that foreign state that's described in uh, that code where the courts of the United States recognize uh, that that foreign state is immune from the jurisdiction of the uh, of the courts of the United States and the states is actually the grantor of the original grant that put their uh, footprints on that birth registration. However, uh, Rod and Maria uh, have had proven that arguing that issue isn't recognized by the courts. And uh, I I don't really know or, or... have direct knowledge of how they responded to that or how they thought about it, but possibly they just thought that judges or courts were just being arrogant and refused to recognize that. If, in fact, uh, we're correct on our premise that we're all suffering under a reduced status in law, uh, and at law, and and we're really at law instead of in law. 
uh, that would explain why the Rod and uh, Maria didn't have a positive uh, experience with utilizing the uh, Federal uh, Foreign Sovereign Immunities Act uh, argument of immunity that uh, in the status in which they're operating, knowing or unknowing, or in either case uh, being recognized as being in, that that uh, they're not recognized as foreign states, and I'm sure they're not. United States citizens are not such things. Then uh, that immunity wouldn't apply to them. Uh, it's... Uh, at least my contention that finishing that original grant ting uh, and uh, uh, completing that trust will modify that status to where uh, you'll be recognized that uh, that you have that foreign sovereign immunity described in Title 28, 1600 sections. And, uh, and that's basically what we're all looking for, isn't it? To just be left alone. And uh, But it uh, it's like I've said before, it, it appears as though there's there's got to be some type type of a basic defect that uh, is affecting us all, that uh, everyone has to deal with all of these issues, whatever they are for you, uh, uh, travel uh, without licensing, um, not having your children in public school and homeschool them, um, Taxes, paying land use taxes, and uh, and things like that. So, seems to be something uh, that is foundational. That's diminished uh, the status of the men and women occupying these lands of North America. That. Uh, our predecessors, or if you want to use the term forefathers, were not suffering under after uh, the Revolutionary War. That something somewhere happened along that uh, journey since uh, uh, 1778, which may or may not be the, uh, the United States Constitution. But it seems to be more than that, uh, the status that uh, the government uh, authorities, regard us, uh, look at us, you know, and, and uh, it appears as though applying principles and maxims of law logic that to uh, discover what that is uh, wouldn't involve going back and and researching uh, oh uh, the bankruptcy uh, the introduction of uh, Federal Reserve notes the discontinuance of gold and gold trading or silver certificates and silver issue and uh, gold issue and things like that uh, it, it has to be more than something uh, something like that that, uh, that it's just impacting all of us uh, that it doesn't appear to be anyone that's uh, not subject to uh, the issues that uh, folks are uh, complaining about or are concerned with today, you know, and why these um, 
Congress critters and other legislators don't seem to pay a, a tinker's damn uh, attention to what uh, what the people are want or telling them or anything else. Uh, if they were, this uh, health care issue wouldn't even be an issue, would it? It's certainly gotten enough uh, negative messages that... Uh, that they wouldn't keep pushing for uh, something like this health care program. And it appears as though they're going to keep working at it until they get it through. Uh, it's it's like they do with everything. If at first we don't, they don't succeed, they try and try again and uh, push it along keep uh, introducing it in different ways and different forms or they or they'll just uh turn around and uh reword uh all the provisions of what they're trying to get through and then just stick it on another bill or legislation and slide it in that way so you know it's uh it appears as though there's something fundamentally uh, defective or some something that's fundamentally affecting all of us. And uh, equally, is it not? Uh, doesn't seem to be anyone immune from it. Uh, I have my own little... Uh, successes or ex experiences that most of you don't have uh, it's like I said uh, we are we've been teaching you for a long time that uh, your quest for liberty or freedom uh, ch change in the uh, or modification of your status and and uh, how the government uh, powers to be uh, regard you is uh, something that will take place in the space between your ears and nowhere else. It's what you believe <clears throat> and not what you learn or hear from uh, us or, or anywhere else. It's not commerce documents, it's not GSA forms, it's not IRS forms, it's not going to be uh, repatriation declarations or revocation of signature documents, uh, uh, you know, or, or anything else. It's, uh, it's going to take place in the space between your ears and nowhere else. When that happens, then you will experience a change in uh, and how the powers to be uh, interact and react to you at least according to my personal experiences now it may very well turn out to be that uh, completing that trust instrument or that granting and could you folks star six and mute yourselves out and get some background noise, please? Uh, completing that uh, uh, that granting that uh, has your footprints on it may, uh, in fact, uh, do a lot to uh, help you that uh, other concepts that I uh, just mentioned of revocation of signatures and <clears throat> declaration of sovereignty and other issues don't uh, accomplish. And, uh, but we'll see when we've had a chance to uh, experiment with that on our own. And Timothy... Where are you at tonight? Because <laughs> I didn't really have a subject I was prepared to deal with. It's 
expecting you to uh, cover what you want to do. I'm going to give you another 15 minutes if you can make it in here. Uh, if not, then I'm going to go over uh, probably briefly things that you've uh, uncovered this week. I'm not going to do as thorough job as you would do because you're the researcher. And uh, all we did was it bounce it off of each other. You know, but so uh, <clears throat> it's like uh scripture tells us, you know, um it, it this 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 uh concept that I just gave you of your Changing your condition, your uh, position, your legal standing, or this and that will take place in that space between your ears. Well, that that's what Scripture teaches us, you know. Uh, faith of a mustard seed is what it is, and believing something changes it. Uh, help is on the way now. Well, I wish you'd get here. <laughs> is asking me to speak on the NATO troops being deployed here in the United States. Well, uh, I, I've seen that, and I posted that actually on the Google group in a discussion. Uh, it, it's a little late for that, isn't it, folks? I mean, there's been uh, a German Luftwaffe uh, wing uh, stationed in New Mexico, since the uh, mid 1990s or uh, 97 or 98, flying sorties all over North America with armed uh, German uh, fighter aircraft, uh, and they rotate the uh, the pilots and co-pilots and uh, uh, other crew members. Uh, in and out of the country as they get acclimated to the landscape and uh, lay of the land, so to speak, and bring in fresh ones. There's been reports of uh, Chinese police or troops uh, landed in uh, on Washington State uh, last year. Uh, I haven't seen any evidence of that, but uh, it wouldn't really surprise me. There's been more than uh, a few photographs on the web regarding uh, UN white UN vehicles with black UN on them, on uh, sitting on rail at railroad car sidings and on railroad cars being transported and things like that since. Uh, what, 96, 97, 98, something like that. And supposedly they were just uh, uh, modifying the vehicles and uh, uh, U.S. military vehicles and uh, painting them up so the U.N. could utilize them in other countries and shipping them out, but I haven't seen any record of... Uh, of any shipping uh, manifests or anything like that. So, uh, if uh, if this report uh, was being circulated around, it supposedly uh, President Obama has called for and asked for German NATO troops, which are UN, uh, to be brought here on North America uh, and uh, bivouacked here or whatever and possibly other uh, NATO forces being brought here. Uh, it, it's a little late for that or to, to be concerned about it, folks, it would appear to me. They've been here for some time. And uh, whether they're going to increase those numbers or not, if... Uh, if there's some type of an event that uh, the powers to be 
are expecting to take place that the uh, people of North America are not going to be real happy about and they perceive some type of uh, uh, situation developing that there are police forces or civil forces and there are National Guard and what military is left after the base closings and uh, forces we do have being stationed in how many countries... uh, uh, in the world or around the world can't deal with that they're going to need foreign troops uh, that could very well backfire on them and who knows I had someone ask me uh, I think it was today maybe yesterday if uh, possibly this uh uh, Restore America plan or Restore America plan, the trap wrap could be something that uh, uh, could develop into a situation that might uh, cause a reaction that uh, foreign troops might might be needed or could be perceived to be needed. And Sam, I see you're in here. Good to see you tonight. I don't remember you ever being on here before. Cotton picker. About time you uh, visit us in our broadcast. And uh, I, I want to get with you about uh, that broadcast that the uh, alias uh, Sam Kennedy did uh, this past week or the week before last with that Dallas talk show where uh, I think he said that you uh, you said that any patriot that doesn't sign on to the trap rap is a coward. Uh, he didn't name you, uh, Regan, uh, Tom, or Tim, anybody specifically, but it, since he's your spokesman that you've, that you've uh, chosen to be your spokesman. <laughs> I wonder if uh, <laughs> if you're uh, uh, supporting that uh, statement. I, I for one, was uh, flabbergasted uh, <laughs> that that he could be so idiotic, uh, or arrogant to make a statement like that, uh, <laughs> which was uh, if if any patriot who does not sign on to that uh, trap rap is a coward. Uh, That's, um, I'd say he shot himself in the foot with that one. Not one of uh, the alias uh, Sam Kennedy's uh, more intelligent uh, moves. I guess you're not going to type anything in here and respond to that. If you want to call in, I'd be glad to unmute you. If you got something you want to say. Uh, maybe you're still on the road. Uh, I hope you're having an enjoyable and safe trip back home. You wouldn't know where that cotton pick and Timothy is tonight, would you? I don't believe I've ever done this before, actually. It's kind of an experiment tonight. I'll let somebody else uh, run the, kind of take over the subject in the broadcast, and then not myself, uh, not be prepared to fill in uh, or deal with the subject myself. And Tim, TJ, you got five more minutes. <laughs> And uh, I'm going to cover it uh, the best way I can, Cotton Pecker. You see, it's uh, an hour earlier out there where he is. Uncle Doug doesn't see Sam on. Uh, oh, Uncle Doug, aren't you Sam Davis? <laughs> and if you're not, you shouldn't. You should not 
be using his handle. <laughs> oh, just his friend. Okay. All right, I know who it is. Gave yourself away. I I don't know anybody would have the the, the uh, audacity to refer to uh, Sam Davis as a lard butt, other than myself. Carpool, uh, you you don't have inherent rights recognized by the world. That's a patriot delusion. Those were uh, forfeited with your footprints on a document. That you don't understand the ramifications of. It, you know, it speaks volumes that uh, the powers to be don't seem to be interested in a second set of those footprints in your entire life. Uh, even people that are double amputees uh, I've spoken to uh, in prison that can't provide fingerprints. They do not take footprints. They have no print card <laughs> for footprints. There, There is no such thing. There's no FBI uh, uh, footprint card. See? There's only a uh, fingerprint card. So there's no, in, in the minds of the uh, 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 powers to be, there's no substitute for this fingerprint. You'd think that, uh, that they would uh, make some kind of a provision where they could use the footprint, but they don't seem to be interested in that. I would suggest to you that there's a specific reason why they don't. And uh, that is that they don't want to tie uh, other documents and relationships uh, issues uh, that have uh, appeared or re reared its head in our lives uh, since that original granting and... Uh, those footprints were put on that document. Uh, they just don't want to attach those footprints to these other things like school registration, uh, driver's licensing, uh, military service, uh, state-issued IDs, uh, criminal court, uh, experiences and things like that. That's it. Uh, thank you, uh, Bill Resistor. It's uh, Pastor Lindsay Williams that speaks of, uh, I think Timothy was uh, telling me about CD. He's Warning you folks of what's going to take place after this health care provision is uh, finally passed. Yeah, I couldn't remember his name. Thank you. Uh, Resistor put a link up there for you to YouTube. So you can go and watch after this broadcast, of course. And, uh, and see that. Uh, that man's uh, come up with some pretty good things over the years. I've uh, watched what he publishes uh, and uh, makes us uh, aware of and things like that. And pretty good research and discernment of what's going on. Joey uh, suggests there's uh, 
90-minute video here by David Parker Williams and why form a new government. Uh, what's wrong with the one Yahweh set up for us? Yeah. Okay, Uncle Doug. Uh, how about... Ah, uh, uh, you left. Cotton picker. I don't know what kind of sick you were talking about. Uh, cold or flu or something like that. I told you before to use the Vicks Vapor Rub on the bottoms of your feet rather than your chest. Put a white sock on. Cold, flu, something like that. Oh, you'll feel relief in a 30 minutes. And if you do that and go to bed, you wake up the next day feeling much better, if, if not uh, completely cured. Uh, guest 44 is asking me uh, if capitus dominio maximus is expressed in all lowercase. No, maximus is expressed in all upper uppercase spelling of your complete name, first, middle, and last. Uh, minima, uh, medium rather, is uh, your first and your given names. Uh, capitalized in your family name, all capitals, and uh, minima, capitus dominio minima, is uh, your name written out in all lowercase. And that's the premise on which we make all of our documents uh, in all lowercase, the complete document. And it's why we spell the sacred names of Yahweh and Yeshua in all lowercase and, and our own names in all lowercase. <clears throat> it has to do with the office of man. See, they, uh, what's the first thing they did to us in the public full system? They taught us how to write our name. <laughs> how did they teach us to write that? Print it out, capitalizing each letter. That's a capitus dominio uh, media, medium, diminishment of your sovereign rights. You reduce your standing in law by doing that. On the on the birth registration, the Social Security card, everything's in capitals. Uh, no matter how you uh, write. Uh, a description of your names and your family name on applications and different forms and whatever uh, s how you sign your name uh, bank accounts uh, loans or whatever it's going to come out all capitalized so completely re destroying your standing in law that's uh That's what we're talking about. Uh, it's in keeping with uh, not finishing the original uh, granting of the trust at, uh, in the birthing, B-E-R-T-H-I-N-G, uh, room, see, where the vessel was B-E-R-T-H-ed, birthed. Uh, well, uh, t since uh, Timothy is obviously tied up, I know he hasn't done this on purpose, folks. Uh, yeah, it's just something unportable. He can't make it. If we'd have been able to do a broadcast uh, early in the week, he was chomping on the bit since Tuesday uh, afternoon to do a broadcast. He would have uh, been free to uh, devote his uh, full attention to it. But uh, there's some things going on with his uh, 
responsibilities that he just can't avoid on a Saturday evening. So it makes it difficult. That's why he pops in and out of here when he does. Um, rather than keep uh, meandering around here and trying to think of uh, something to talk about or answering your chat questions as I spot them, how about if I just uh, open this up? Uh, you folks can <clears throat> star six and unmute yourselves out or unmute your phone and uh, for comments, uh, questions, or criticism. They bail me out. <laughs> Don't everybody jump in at once. Uh, let me see if I can cover this subject that uh, Timothy wanted to talk about. <clears throat> Not being the one that did the actual research, but uh, the one that was bounced off of. Uh, Timothy looked up the word tilled. T-I-L-D, because he found a tilled mark, symbol, sign, on a 2010 United States silver dollar. I have a 2009 here, and some others. This has a, <clears throat> the same tilde, tilled mark. Uh, I noticed the older silver dollars, and... Uh, the uh, 30s, the 20s, uh, the teens, and the 1800s do not have this. When the United States Mint started placing these on the silver dollars, uh, I mean the real ones, with uh, not the bimetal ones, I, I don't know. Uh, but this is what it is on the back where the eagle is. It says on this coin... Uh, United States of America, all capitalized. There's a period or a, uh, a dot uh, at the beginning and end of that uh, sentence. Then on the bottom it says one, the numeral one, O-Z for ounce, period. Uh, fine silver in all capitals. And then a, a line that looks could be mistaken for a a uh, dash or an apostrophe or uh, not an apostrophe uh, 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 a, a dash line uh, one dollar so uh, but if you look at that line between the words silver and one that's not in fact a dash that's a tilde symbol sign it is, in fact, the key on your keyboard <laughs> to the right of the numeral one and the explanation mark on the left-hand top of your keyboard. That little squiggle line, that's a tilde symbol, T-I-L-D. Now, I was asking my herbalist uh, tonight and, and his uh, wife, they're uh, in their uh, late 40s, uh, if they knew what a till was. And uh, they said, well, till the soil. I said, no, no, no. Uh, retailers, uh, merchants have a till. Do you know what a till is? Uh, I know from uh, being around uh, hardware stores and uh, the older uh, 5 and 10 stores uh, predated the uh, uh, Walmart and and Kmart and things like that, and and having owned bars that the uh, cash registers referred to in my generation and and before as the till, and uh, so this tilled mark, I believe, uh, is an offshoot of that, and, and why it was uh, once used to describe a cash register, if. Uh, 
if you go uh, and research that tilled symbol on Wikipedia, on Google, you're going to find that it refers to silver. See? And uh, it's uh, on the silver coin. So that that appears to be uh, uh, genuine or correct. But <clears throat> this is uh, Timothy's position on this. I'd like you all to take out a uh, Federal Reserve note of whatever do denomination you have uh, from your wallets, your pockets, uh, pocketbooks, uh, pockets uh, under your, from under your mattress. Uh, we're stuck in the uh, inside uh, band of your hat. And I'd like you to look at the front of that Federal Reserve note, no matter what the denomination. You probably all know this. On the, uh, on the front where the serial number is, it says on the left-hand side, uh, legal tender for all debts, public and private. Does it not? Legal tender for all debts, public and private. Well, we all know what the public debt is. Uh, that's announced uh, on a regular basis, uh, the national debt things like that. What's the private debt? Any of you know? Anybody tell me? Do you think that's a debt between uh, yourself and, and myself? Uh, if I owe you five bucks, I give you five ones or I give you a five dollar bill. Uh, and uh, and that's the private debt that's described. Or if you have a car loan or medical bill, or <clears throat> you stop at Wally World, supermarket, gas stations, and you purchase something and you use those Federal Reserve notes, that, uh, that's being used on a, to pay a private debt. It's not. And here is why. Everything that the name, the all capitalized name, is involved with is public. Everything. From the time that your footprints go on that document and that granting is done, that child is now transformed into the name, the fiction. And that entity can only operate in the public. Everything it does is in the public. So you and I are having a conversation here, uh, interaction, even though it's over the Internet uh, or public airwaves, it's regarded as uh, a private conversation amongst ourselves, say, one-on-one. -on -one. But uh, in fact, the, uh, the, the powers to be and uh, the, uh, uh, the owner of TalkShoe and uh, the Federal Communications uh, commission, the FCC, regards this as a public uh, activity. Uh, it's uh, if you go to a a local uh, meeting of your county uh, commission, your city council, your uh, township uh, or borough supervisors. Uh, whatever, and uh, 
they have a period by which they'll let uh, people from the audience kind of step up to a podium or something like that and make comments or ask questions or, or whatever. They always announce that as a public comment period. Well, they do that to me here locally when I used to waste my time uh, going to those uh, uh, gatherings. I used to start out what I had to say by asking, when is the private comment period? Uh, you seem to have a comment period for yourself since you're public uh, government uh, and for your citizens, but what about myself, uh, who's... Uh, uh, conducting myself in the, in the private as a man and a living spirit. Uh, when when do you have comment periods uh, for me? Because specifically, it's uh, dealed out, uh, spelled out in the Declaration of Rights for the uh, Constitution for the Commonwealth or State of Pennsylvania, and the uh, Bill of Rights for the. Uh, uh, U.S. federal corporation that you cannot discriminate against me because of my na national origin, see, or my re seriously held religious beliefs. So you've got to, by law, uh, allow me to interact with you in a private capacity, uh, man and living spirit with a legal with legal fictions and corporations. Uh, how are you going to accommodate that? And uh, invariably, I just get uh, five uh, mute uh, blank uh, stares. Uh, no response from anybody. Uh, once in a while, they say, well, we just have a public comment period, and that's all we provide for. So if you don't want to use that, then you can sit down. Uh, which is really what they wanted me to do anyway. They didn't want to hear what I had to say next. But uh, the point is, folks, that uh, in the world, okay, we're, we're, we're not to be of the world, which uh, is uh, believing in it and worshiping it uh, and thinking only of, of worldly things. But uh, Scripture says uh, uh, we're born in the world. Well, Boy, doesn't that cotton picking uh, uh, birth registration, that birthing, uh, that granting seem to hit that on the head. But in either case, you can't transact any uh, any commercial activities without using Federal Reserve notes or some derivative or uh, similarity to that, be it a credit card, a check, uh, uh you know, unless you're bartering or trading some kind of co commodity or something, uh, you're using those Federal Reserve notes. And uh, it, at least for myself, I can I can speak of that. And it, and when it says uh, legal tender for all debts, public and private, I used to always think the private is myself, but it's really. Uh, spelled in all capital letters. To be me, it would have to be all lowercase word private. Uh, so what that's telling you is that that note, that Federal Reserve note, that everybody, including myself, uh, until Timothy uh, was given this uh, discernment this week, uh, is not a, a silver certificate, you see. Uh, is not what, what we think, how we regard that thing. It doesn't say it's uh, redeemable in silver, uh, bullion, or fine silver, or whatever, and this and that. Well, in fact, that may not be correct. And here is why. Now, you look at that Federal Reserve note you got in your hand. The face of it is black lettering, is it not? Got a serial number on there. Uh, 
somebody's uh, booting up their computer and coming through on your mic. Could you star six and mute out? Appreciate it. Uh, thank you. Uh, that's the public side of that of that document, of that uh, negotiable instrument, of that note. Is the black side with the serial number in red. That's probably somebody's bond number off the back of their one of their social security cards. Now turn it over and tell me what color that is. Is it green? It's all green on the back. What are the notes that Abraham Lincoln issued? That it's supposed surmised that caused him to be assassinated. Lincoln Greenbacks issued by the US Treasury, silver backed uh currency. Timothy You bailed me out? <laughs> you what? What did you say? You bailed me out finally? I bailed you out finally. I've yeah. been limping along here like a like a cripple <laughs> for an hour and twenty three minutes, <laughs> trying to avoid uh, bringing up your subject <laughs> and doing very badly at it. Well, you survived this long, so it sounds like you've done all all right. <laughs> no, not really. <laughs> Let me tell you what I've covered. Okay. The tilde on the back of the silver dollar, and I was beginning to ex- explain the uh, all debts, public and private, on the front of the Federal Reserve notes, and had uh, people flip that over and look at the green back. So now I'm going to let you take over. <laughs> How long can you stay? Rest of the night, good. Two hours? Three hours? I'm here. I'm sorry, David. I gotta pick up a smoke. <laughs> Hold on a second. No, he didn't pick up my bad habits, folks. He brought that one along with him. <laughs> All right, I'm back. I'm back. <laughs> Besides, guest fifty three even said I was I stank at explaining this. Oh really? <laughs> Yes, finally, an, an honest critic. Well, so you went over the tilde, day, huh? Uh, went out the, I went over the tilled symbol and uh, the tilled cash register. That's all I, I covered regarding that. Okay. It, it's on the silver dollars, at least the newer ones. And, uh, David, I found that goes back to at least 1996. Okay. Well, I believe... Ni- is it 96 or no? I think it goes back. Yeah, 96. Um, that's as far back as I've seen it. So I'm, I presume it goes back a lot further. Um, shoot, I think it goes back to the very beginning. Well, I'll scan the 2009 uh, nines. One of these that I have here, and I'll uh, put it up on. Uh, Google group and a PDF and a JPEG file. As long as you folks uh, promise not to talk, turn that cotton picking thing into some kind of a silver bond or something. I'll scan the uh, back of one coin. Actually, that won't help you anyway because you need to scan the fronts for the date. I'm sorry I interrupted you. I'm going to mute out. No, you're no. Don't mute out because I need you here. <laughs> I need you to be my Ed McMahon. <laughs> well, where should we uh where should we begin? Uh yeah, the till day. One ounce fine silver, till day one dollar. So one ounce of fine silver is on the magnitude of one dollar. If we're gonna look at the mathematic uh, uh definition of the till day. Now a friend of mine and I were, were discussing this earlier today, 
and we were thinking, all right, what, you, you know, how does this go? It, it goes one way. It has to go, it has to go one way, and I believe it's going to be explained in the currency uh, Federal Reserve note uh, displaying the phrase this. Uh, what does it say? Um, this no, this legal tender. Hold on. This note is legal tender for all debts, public and private. Now, it's my contention, I shouldn't use that word, con. Um, it's my premise, if you will, or idea, that uh, we can take a silver dollar and we could go to, let's say, a pawn shop or a coin dealer. Now, we know the value of that one ounce fine silver is I believe at the market price closed at what uh, seventeen I think it was seventeen sixty two or something it closed at yesterday, and we could exchange that. Let's say there's no exchange fee, there's no service fee or overhead or this that and the other. That one ounce fine silver on spot market price New York is worth seventeen dollars and sixty two cents. But if we look at the true value of that symbol. We're, we're probably looking at Mexican pesos. Now, there are many currencies that use the, use the word pesos. Um, I know Philippines uses pesos, and there are quite a few other, especially uh, Caribbean or South American countries that use pesos as well. But I'm just going to presume, since the definition of peso symbol, it goes back to Spain, it goes back to the Americas, and it goes back to Mexico as that sign being a peso sign. Now, we could we could uh negotiate that silver dollar into 17.62 pesos. And when I say pesos, I mean that symbol with one vertical line going through it. Uh David and I were sent an email uh and it's it's on Wikipedia where the uh image comes from that the now, this is what I say the true dollar sign is. The true dollar sign is two vertical lines through an S. And that sign was created by two, uh, by a Scottish man, I believe, uh, on, where is it? Was it Philadelphia, David? The Bailey, what is it, Bailey Bale? Is that what it's called, that, that image? Yes, there's a, uh, a uh, it's either a PDF file or, a JPEG image on the file section of the County Notary Google group where uh, they can look at that commemoration of the first time that was used. So it's two vertical lines through the S. I happen to have a uh, royal a royal cash register. Sorry about that. There's a bus going by. It might be a little loud. But I happen to have a royal cash register. I believe it's from the 50s, the 40s or 50s. And it has for the symbol, for a dollar, it has the two vertical lines through the S. Now, modern keyboards on computers and um, um, typewriters, et cetera, have the one vertical line through the S. And I had a very interesting conversation with the woman at Comcast about that. But this this calculator from the 40s or 50s has two vertical lines through the S. Now it's my it's my premise, and I'm working off of this that that's the true symbol for a dollar. However, I have yet to find a note, a Federal Reserve note, a silver certificate, or any type of note that's used in uh, or on America that has the two vertical line S imprinted on the note itself. Now, it seems through our uh, disillusionment of this system that we've been all, well, we have been programmed to believe that one, the one vertical line through the S is the actual symbol for a dollar. I, I just don't, I don't buy that anymore. Now, let's go back to the one ounce fine silver. One ounce fine silver is on the magnitude of one dollar. And it could almost, it, it, it could reasonably be stated that one ounce fine silver equals one dollar. Now, if that's the case, and I receive a receipt from, let's say, Sam's Club, that receipt has no symbol on it. So it's my contention that 
they're receiving funds, currency, dollar for dollar. However, here's something I want everyone to hear and take a look at for yourselves. And this is what I did. Uh, IRS forms. I took I took the 2008 1099A, uh, 1099 OID, the 1040 V, and the long form 1040. Now, when you look at those forms, you will notice for the 10. Let, let's start with the 1040. That symbol is nowhere to be found. One horizontal line. I'm sorry, one vertical line through the S on that form. It's nowhere to be found on that form anywhere. When you look at the 1099 OID and the 1099A, and this is this is this actually proves to me that the the Internal uh, Revenue Service does in fact do the revenue. Internal Revenue R E hyphen V E N U E revenue. They revenue the money from the public to the private and vice versa. You'll notice on the 1099A form, and you'll notice on the 1099 OID form, that the one vertical line S is inside the box on those forms where a dollar where an amount is entered. It's inside the box. But then I want you to take a look at the form 1040V, standing for voucher, and this form is what is um, sent with a 1040 if a tax is supposedly owed. Now you'll notice on the 1040V inside the box, and it's in the color black, inside the box there is no sign. There is no symbol for the currency. All it says is dollars and cents. And dollars is spelled out, cents is spelled out within their representative boxes. So Here's the way I'm looking at it. When a payment is sent to the IRS, they are receiving that payment in dollars. Now, on the back of a silver dollar, it reads one ounce fine silver is on the same magnitude as one dollar. So when they receive a payment on the 1040V, they are actually receiving silver as payment. Any other form, they're receiving um, uh, pesos, if you will with one vertical line through the S. So when they're being paid, they're receiving silver. Um, everything else is a, is a, a lower uh, substance of currency. Sorry about that. So I, I want you to keep in mind, now this is the way I'm looking at it. Every time the IRS is paid, you know, for example, and the reason I'm using the IRS is not to pick on them per se, but it's because all of us at some point in our lives have had to dealt with them or pay a tax or something of that nature. So what I'm saying is with the 1040V, the amount being paid on a 1040V is in dollars and cents. But every other time, they are acting as if they're receiving pesos. Now, it's my contention, it's my belief, my idea uh, that uh, this is where the original issue discount comes from because a peso, a $1 uh, on the market uh, today that close on Friday equals 7.92 pesos, which is basically 7.92 cents almost, if you will. So you're going to get approximately 8 pesos for every $1 tendered. Now, the way I see it, it can either be a dollar is worth point is worth uh, eight pesos, or it can be a dollar is worth one ounce of fine silver, equated in a seventeen point what six two. Now, the way I'm looking at it, it has to be one or the other. It cannot be both. Now, let's think about this. How can it be both? Well. I think the key phrase here is how can it be both is found on the phrase on the Federal Reserve notes. This note is legal tender for all debts, public and private. If that note is being tendered on the public side, it is valued at 8 pesos. If that note is being tendered on the private side, it is worth one ounce of fine silver which equates to 17.62 pesos. 
that that's my contention here. That that's the way I see it. And if anyone else has a different idea about that or sees it a bit different, please chime in and comment because I I, I want to hear others a, a, as to how they look at it. But this is my contention on this. Now I've got another item that that I've been looking at over the past day that goes into maritime liens and attachments. Um, the, the just, wait, wait a minute. Let me interrupt okay. you. You haven't okay. taken you haven't ta- taken that subject to its full extent. Okay, where should I go with it? Well, uh, it appears as though Eustace Mullins may have been half wrong. Yes, it. it you know, it, it's talked about Federal Reserve notes, and Federal Reserve notes are evidences of debt. Now, I agree. They are evidences of debt. In Black's Law Dictionary, 8th edition, look up the term debt security. And you're going to have to look up the word uh, security, and you'll find it under there. And it's the term debt security. Now, I'm going off the top of my head. A debt security, it reads, is, um, is basically what is given, and it says this right in Black's Law, 8th edition. By the corporation. Now, the being a singular, the, what corporation are we talking about? Are we talking about the United States? Are we talking about the Federal Reserve? Well, we know the Federal Reserve is the fiscal agent for the United States, so I believe they just go hand in hand. And it states it's the obligation of the corporation to the holder of the debt instrument. Meaning, whoever holds a Federal Reserve note in their hand they are a creditor to the United States. And in their hand, in their hand is a creditor to the United States on the private side. They are holding one ounce of silver when it comes to a Federal Reserve note, one dollar. Now on the public side, they're holding what? Eight pesos. Now, Eustace Mullins. Uh, for all intents and purposes, to put his his research in a nutshell, you know, he's talking about the debt notes, and this is an evidence of debt and this, that, and the other. Well, that is true to an extent, but see, that only looks at the public side. We, We also need to look at the private side of that Federal Reserve note, because if that Federal Reserve note is good for all debts, public and private, there are two sides to that note. There's a public side, and there's a private side. Now, Eustace Mullins, I know Winston's talked about the debt note and this, that, and the other. Um, I, I, I think the point is being missed, and we're only looking at one side of the coin. We're only looking at the public side, the, the, the debt side, the public debt side. But we also need to flip that coin over on the reverse, and we need to make sure certain that we're looking at this coin that reads one ounce fine silver, Till day one dollar, and that's the private side. That note is worth that one dollar bill is worth one ounce of fine silver. Now, it, 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 the way I look at it, a silver coin is a private piece of currency. You're not going to find silver dollars in circulation. That's because it's a private side currency. Only the private side is going to use silver to settle any debt or any obligation that's outstanding. The private side can only use silver. The private side is not going to use a debt instrument to discharge its obligation. It's only going to use a form of credit, a form of uh, the plus side of the ledger, if you will, something of substance to settle its debt. And I believe that one ounce fine silver till day one dollar, that's the private side. And when you look on the public side, that one dollar is equal to eight pesos. Does that hit on it, David? Was that where you're 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 going with that? Yes. Okay. Now it seems to to appear as though what was announced by the uh chairman of the Federal Reserve the day after Lindy called uh, setting up the appointment to meet with the um, auditors and receive the card. Cover that now. That that validates what you're saying and why why that is. 
where uh, where, where that estate is uh uh the re- the re- assets of that estate where it where it came from was it public or was it private okay well it's going to have to be private it it just has to be now if a um if you know let, let let's look at this from let's say the Tony King perspective and the DTC and all that stuff if if a man or a woman goes through the DTC and enters into the private side all right and I'm I'm using just a basic simple explanation for this if you enter in on the private side that means any currency that you use on the private side or within any transaction, it's going to have to be a private form of currency. You're not going to use public debt on the private side if you're on the public if you're on the private side in a non-commercial venue. And it seems that um, we were thinking about this, and we were thinking, okay, if let, let's say let's say someone receives a legacy card or something like that, what what are they using for? currency out in the real world um this goes back to a recording i have of a man who uh, uh hopped on the line on a on a talk show uh july i believe or june of last year and he talked about a man who he bef- befriended in the 70s when he was in college and he befriended an older man and this man would go to the bank every week and withdraw five thousand in currency and he he basically came around to ask the man, you know, basically what he was doing. And the, and the explanation was, well, I'm spreading the currency. Now, was Circulating. that... Yes, yes, I'm sorry. Circulating the currency. Now, the question is, here, here's a man, and he said at the time, this is in the 70s, the man's long gone by now of this life. But he said, I'm, I'm, I'm simply spreading the currency. Five grand every week in the 70s, you know, that's a nice chunk of change. And by all intents and purposes, when I look at it today, it's still a nice chunk of change. But now the question is, if this man is on the private side, this man is spreading the currency into circulation on the private side, how is it that he can use Federal Reserve notes to accomplish that task? Well, it's very simple. It's because that debt security, as represented by a Federal Reserve note, also has a private side to it. And that's the meaning of the phrase. This is legal tender for all debts, public and private. It can be used on the public side, and it can be used on the private side. It's just a matter of the currency conversion when it is used. Now, what, does, what determines if the, uh, let's say, spender or holder of that note is on the public side or the private side? Now, I think this is where we're going to tie in Tetley's um, uh, maritime law, et cetera. But I want to make sure I hit on the point that you were speaking of, David. You, Eustace, Eustace seemed to, the way I look at he very good researcher, et cetera. I'm not knocking him for what he did. It was a beautiful thing. He was given a blessing. However, it, it wasn't the whole kit and caboodle, if you will. He, he was only looking at the public side. It doesn't seem like anyone is focusing on the private side. It's always talk about the debt. This is a debt note. This is evidence, evidence of debt and blah, 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 blah. Okay, well, then where does the private side of this note come in? The private side has to be there. And since it is there, what? What type of status does one need in order to cross over to that boundary? And instead of spending eight pesos, one is actually spending 17.62 pesos, if you will, or actually 17.62 dollars in a sense in pesos. Um, where you know, I, scratch that. Where is it when one tenders one dollar? Is one spending either pesos or one is spending silver, a silver dollar? Where's the cutoff line? Where's the, what is it, a demarcation line in war? Where is that line and what determines that? Is it an OID form? Is it an A form? 
I believe it could be. Is it a Ben? W A Ben? Is it a W eight I M Y? I believe it could be. Now, are they going to let just anyone do that? No. They're going to challenge them every step of the way. Or is there a way that's actually been set up in this system on purpose to allow free of charge someone to be able to claim that status as a non-commercial vessel but still be able to use this quote-unquote debt security but it's not being used as a debt. It's being used as, as one ounce of fine silver. Now, I wholeheartedly, wholeheartedly believe David Clarence has done that. David Clarence is in the non-commercial realm. And the evidence I provide for that, um, you know, not, not to discount the emails and stuff and the information we've seen, but I, I focus your attention on Tetley's Maritime Law. If, if you're in front of your computer, type in Tetley's. It's well, a, what about the uh, phone call about the card and the announcement the next day? Are you going to tie that in with what you're, where you're going now? Okay. Um, the call. It, it, it appears as though the auditors... Uh, verified that all of the trust assets uh, were delivered, moved over yeah. to the, uh, if not the dock, loaded back onto the vessel that yeah. the new company official, uh, the captain, has uh, uh, control over. And uh, even though I, 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 I saw folks uh, typing in the chat window on Sam Davis's broadcast Thursday or Friday night about that, or the following week of this announcement by the Federal Reserve Chairman, uh, their thinking was this: uh, these people that uh, are supposedly being brought into the DTC by the false name uh, Tony King was impacting the Federal Reserve and caused that announcement. What's our position on that? Why that announcement was made? Lighten up another smoke, or did we lose you? I think you're still here somewhere. Guest 35, are you asking if, if I am on uh, Social Security disability? No, I never have been. And if you'll be patient, he'll explain this to you. Timothy, we've lost you if you're speaking. Oh, I'm here. I'm sorry. Okay. I had you on mute. We're, okay. We're, um, we're dealing with an option trade here. I don't believe it was the, uh, anything that Tony King per se had done because it, was, it said in a surprise move they had to raise the rate. And it was very bank. ironic. Bank to bank. Yes. The, it impacted the bank uh, for the benefit of the Federal Reserve. The, this move was to benefit the Federal Reserve to increase their revenue coming in. Yes. And when the Fed raises rates, they're expecting a contraction of the money supply. There, There's a humongous vacuum occurring. And they're they're pulling out, the way I see it today, they were pulling out the public side of that note because they were expecting in three days' time a large infusion on the private side. That's the private side of that note coming into play, that Federal Reserve note. Mm -hmm. Now, as I said on last week's broadcast, can I prove that 100%? No, I cannot. I can't do it. I, I just can't do it. But I tell you what, 
you know, hearing the story about Hartford Van Dyke having a $500 million lien that he sent through, and it was good to go. And then Bill Clinton takes all the credit for that, being the only president in history to receive a half a billion dollar payment on Social Security. First time it ever happened. Now, did Hartford receive the the credit for doing that? No, he did not. But he knew he did it. And uh, others know that received that information at the time know it was what Hartford did that moved that market, that made uh, William Jefferson Clinton, the, the corporate president, come out and say that. Even though he took the credit, he didn't have anything to do with it whatsoever. He just claimed it on his watch. But we know it's what Hartford did in the background on the private side that actually moved that market. And it's my contention that it was the day after the call came through, after the call was made on the option, that's when the Fed came out the very next day on that Thursday and said in a surprise move they had to up the, the rate for overnight lending to banks to 0.25%, otherwise known as two bits, which are two, two units of silver. And now if, it, if they raised the rate two bits, my grandfather always said that, two bits, two bits. What's two bits? And I was like, is it $2? He said, no, it's 25 cents. Well, when you're talking in bits, you're talking in silver. They raise the percentage two bits. They raise the percentage two percentage points in, in, in – they're working on silver. So they receive something on the private side. They had – there was an infusion of cash on the private side, which had to take the place of that public side money on that $1 bill. That's the way I see it. Or, I the fe- or the Federal Reserve had to pay something significant. Yes. That they They're needed more up. revenue coming in to yes. cover it. Yes, I agree. Yes. Yeah. So it, it, this estate is obviously not in the public anymore. No. Any more than the bonding that the courts and the, and the, and the banks, the financial institutions, the insurance companies, uh, various government agencies are not doing those things in the public, or everybody would know about it and it would be going on, and it would wouldn't have taken the research of these uh, commerce gurus people uh, to uncover this, and uh, so. The the settling of that estate is not coming from the public fund. It's coming from the private fund because it's all in private. You, you, no one can go anywhere on the Internet or contact any government agency by any way, shape, or form or uh, a public official and find any information on this estate. It's all on the private side. So the resources of the revenue or the assets of that are all on the private side. And that's what he was announcing. Is, uh, and, he, and he cautioned the market uh, not to perceive this as a, as a trend of what's to come yet. This didn't have anything to do with the pub, public side of the market. What was being done was in the private but in talking to my uh, herbalist, who is also a currency trader, uh, he said that these bots, these robots that trade this currency 24 hours a day, seven days a week, uh, reacted to that announcement negatively, and the currency market took a hit that day, which would have been the 23rd, no, uh, 19th, 18th, uh, I don't know, 17th, 18th of last month, something like that. Uh, so uh, uh, it, it it appears to us that either this is a coincidence or the call that was made from the banker to me on a Wednesday, the day before the announcement by the, the Federal Reserve Board chairman, that they were raising their interest rates bank to bank uh, in a surprise move 
they were able to restrict the currency that they admitted in that in that announcement that they had been flooding the market with currency for years to keep the economy afloat so either the economy has suddenly turned around and it's uh all uh, uh roses and blue sky which we know that's in fact not true by the price of gasoline and food uh or there's a no, new source of currency from somewhere or something backing uh, the currency or, or it's boosting the economy or having some type of an effect. That, uh, and it, it, it may very well be, there doesn't seem to be any indicator of anything else that uh, anybody's doing any uh, reports on whether they're economists or financiers or currency experts or whatever. Uh, in any of the publications, that it may very well have been what uh, we've been able to do. And uh, there's a guest in here who wants you to return to Tedley's. So I guess I can let you do that now. <laughs> okay, okay. So, but what, uh, what, we're, what we're saying, folks, is uh, we're through Eustace's research and things like that, and I'm not taking anything away from Eustace, and, and uh, may Yahweh uh, rest his, his soul, uh, living spirit, that he only looked at the public side of the, of the Federal Reserve note, and, and he didn't have the thought to turn it over and look at the greenback side, which evidently is representative of silver. That's what Lincoln printed was greenbacks. <coughs> Lincoln greenbacks. And uh, uh, they they evidently uh, made the ink all black on the front side, the face of it, where the red serial number is, in black on purpose. They don't do things by accident. And the reverse side is in green on purpose. It serves a re it's done for a reason, a specific reason, and it has not to do with. Uh, counterfeiting or, or looking different than other currencies or anything like that, it it appears as though the green side represents so, uh, silver value uh, on the private side. So if, in fact, uh, they've been circulating currency and U.S. bonds on the public side with that uh, bond number off the one of those 10 uh, Social Security cards uh, attached to the name, then there's also another side to all of that, and that's the private side, the silver side, or the gold side. And they've been trading that in the private, not out in the, or, well, they're trading it out in the open, but it, they're, they're disguising it. And those proceeds from that trading belong to the trust. It's trust property. Now, they may be able to keep uh, profits made from the profit, the original profit, uh, for themselves and enrich themselves, but the original interest or uh, profit made on the trading uh, is uh, 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 in silver, and it belongs to the trust. It's trust property. And so that means that the estate that the uh, uh, auditors were uh, inspecting and verifying that everything that all the trust property or currency or, or revenue was there in place and uh, accounted for, uh, had to be paid by the Federal Reserve on the private side. So that would be the surprise move that they never, this whole uh, uh, national treasure quest, something they set up and disguised so well that they believe no one would ever figure it out and no man has. It was given to us, uh, Timothy and I, by Yahweh our Father, 
he'll test I'm sure Timothy will testify he couldn't have figured this out any more than I could have. That's right. Uh, so in in fact those Federal Reserve notes uh, are benefiting all of us. If if all these bond numbers uh from all their these social security accounts are being circulated in these various Federal Reserve districts, uh it's all benefiting your estate. You know, uh, tr- tremendously. Uh, they're doing really good job. So I'll leave you at that with the exception of replying to uh, guest 58 says guest 35 just called David a liar for drawing Social Security when he's in fact not drawing Social Security. Uh, 35, uh, can't you understand? Uh, I'm not drawing Social Security. I don't get Social Security. Never have. Don't have a Social Security account. Wouldn't want one. See? So anyway, leave it at that. uh, Continue with your Admiralty, your uh, 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 um, uh, Well, let's look at... Tatleys. Okay, well... well, Not the T. Well, that, that Social Security thing, that's all in persona. It's all in person. It's not in REM. It does not affect the res, per se. It's all in person. It's all in the person. It's all in the person. It's all in the upper cap name, all capitalized name. That's what Social Security benefits. Even U.S. Treasury checks, uh, as we've seen, have the symbol, have the peso symbol, and they're always payable to the all cap name. They've got nothing to do with the uh, res or the rem. They all have everything to do with the person or the persona. Now, uh, uh, research Tetley's. Tetley's will take you to, um, I believe it's a college um, in, uh, in Canada. And Tetley's is actually, I believe it's the name of a man, and there's a photograph of him, an image of his photo, whatever you want to call it, uh, on that website, <laughs> this this was something I've had this link uh, bookmarked for a long time, and I sent it to David. Uh, man, it's probably been a month or two ago. Uh, I showed him this, but I've never printed any of his papers, and I've never read them up until uh, yesterday or the day before. And once I printed um, one of his papers, and I'm not even finished with it yet, but I was skimming over it, and I called David uh, yesterday. And I said, David, you, you have got to read this stuff because it is phenomenal. It explains everything step by step. Now, what I wanted to do is I wanted to have that with me so I could read the introduction uh, to one of the papers he had written uh, on the broadcast tonight. But unfortunately, uh, I don't have that uh, piece of paper with me at this time. But I tell you what, it's the uh, it's uh, if you go into his papers, uh, it's the one titled um, "Leans." What was it? Uh, Leans um, attachments. Uh, blah 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 in maritime jurisdiction or admiralty jurisdiction or something of that nature. That's the title of the uh, um, paper, and it it is it was printed in uh, a law journal, and I'm trying to think of the name of it. David, do you remember the law journal? It wasn't Tetley's law journal; it was something else. Something no, I, law journal. I don't remember which one you were quoting from. What you were okay. quoting from? Was, um, it the, was it the Talmud? Say it again. Was it the Talmud? The Talmud? No. Uh. Uh-uh. Oh, 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 I thought that's the one they all go by. I'm sorry. Oh. No, that's all right. Um, something law review. Law review, law review. Uh, it'll come to me if necessary. But um, when you read this paper, it, 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 it's just phenomenal. It, it details everything they've done step by step. About It details court appearances. It details, uh, some of you might have heard of in-rem jurisdiction, 
There's in rem jurisdiction, which goes back to civil law, common law. And there's in personam jurisdiction, which goes to admiralty law. And the United States, he goes on to state in this paper, uh, has basically the best of both worlds. Because in the United States, they look to attach in rem and in personam in the same case. And when you read this paper, it talks... Oh, my goodness. It, it just has everything about the vessel. And the point I want to get, the, get across foremost is, in that paper, it, it talks about uh, different jurisdictions, if you will, being countries. It talks about, it breaks it down in Canada, because that's where Tetley's is located, in Canada. It talks about Canada, the United Kingdom, and the United States, first and foremost. And it breaks those those uh, uh, fictions down, if you will, as to their jurisdictions and how they handle admiralty law cases, maritime cases. It talks about maritime liens and it talks about maritime attachments. Now, the point I want to get across, most important for everyone to see is, and this is what David Clarence has shown, is that it states in there a vessel uh, and this, this pertains to uh, the United Kingdom. Uh, and it also pertains to the United States because that's basically where the law came from for the United States is the United Kingdom. And when you look at the DTC paperwork, you can select um, a United Kingdom entity, and, and that's what I've been told is the entity that has to be selected and blah, 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 and down the line. It, it, he ties in the Roman Catholic Church, Roman law. He ties everything in. Now, one, the, the point I want to stress and I want everyone to realize is this. In there, it states, an in rem jurisdiction cannot be applied to a vessel of the state and or a non-commercial vessel. Listen to what I'm saying. He states, in rem jurisdiction cannot apply to a vessel owned by the state and or a non-commercial vessel. David Clarence has the registrar status, and the email stated, this number is to not be placed on a commercial vehicle. This number can only be placed on non-commercial vehicles which strikes out any maritime lien or maritime attachment in REM. Now, what does in REM mean? Petley goes through that information. Now, to my understanding, in REM, you're, you're basically looking at the body. You're looking at common law. And he talks about how back in the day, 1700s, there was basically prohibitions written that admiralty law could not trespass on the jurisdiction of a common law court. The common law always looked at in rem jurisdiction, in rem being the body, the vessel, and the cargo, the vessel transport. That's the only thing that could be looked at in rem. If I walked up to someone and punched him in the nose, he has a right in common law to come after me for damage because I physically did harm to him, if you will, if I had no justification. But now here comes the flip side. It's called in personam. And the common law courts rallied against this because in personam was basically a function of admiralty courts. And anyone who's ever been to court knows or ever been into a 501c3 church knows there's a flag of the United States. And that flag is fringed in gold. The gold fringe flag is representative of admiralty jurisdiction. Any courtroom today you walk into is going to have that flag in the background, and it's going to be fringed in gold. That is a ship. You're on a ship. You're on a vessel at sea. I don't care if you feel like you're standing on concrete on land. They consider you as a vessel at sea. And they're looking at in rem as well as in persona jurisdiction. Now, the, the main um, difference between the two is in rem only goes against the vessel and the cargo it is carrying. In persona jurisdiction is exactly that. In persona, in person, 
personality. What is the person? The person is the all cap name. Now, this is where I believe the flaw can be found. As Hartford Van Dyke said and Winston has mentioned, Hartford always said, find the first mistake. And once you find that first mistake, hone in on it and never let go of it because that's where the quote-unquote remedy is going to be found. Now, Tetley talks about in persona going back to the person. And it's my contention when he says person, he is referring to a live man or woman who is actually the owner of the vessel itself in persona. So he'll talk about person, and I believe what he's referring to is the living man or woman, the flesh, if you will, with the spirit. Now, the thing about in persona is, and this is exactly what I've heard about day in and day out in courts on within the United States, and that is this. Not only does the court take possession of the REM, and in Tetley's, he talks about the res. Anyone who has studied trust law knows exactly what the res is. The res is the body of the trust. The res is also the vessel that our spirit is, is within, if you will. It is the flesh that comes from the dirt of the ground, as discussed in Genesis. That is the res, the body. Now, I find it very interesting, this, this was given today, that if you set up an account at a bank under a trust, the bank does not want the res. The only thing the bank requires is the title page and the signature page of the trust. That's all they want for their records. They do not get a copy of the res of the body because it's private. They have no jurisdiction over the body. The IRS tries to gain jurisdiction of the body, but within any trust, the IRS nor any other man or woman has no jurisdiction of the body. I don't care what anyone says. But the only thing the bank wants, and the bank is on the public side, they only want the title page and the signature page. They do not get the body. The body is private. Now, Tetley talks about in rem and in persona jurisdiction. Now, he, he states in this article, he states the U.S. is different because the U.S. allows attachment in REM as well as in persona, which means not only can the body be held as security for the claim, the person can also be held as security for the claim as well. Now, isn't it interesting that um, some have uh, tendered bonds, etc., to court cases to have them discharged? But only to discover the court will keep going and going. They want the body. This is exactly what Tetley is talking about. Not only do they want the res, the, the value, the, the cargo, the vessel. The res is the vessel, the ship. They not only want that, but they want the person as well. Because when they take the person, they can also get every single asset tied to that person. Now, let's think about this. What accounts, if you will, are in the name of the person? Everything is in the name of the person. The driver's license is in the name of the person. The title to the car is in the name of the person, the all cat name. The Social Security card is in the name of the person. The mortgage, the student loan, the utility bill, the gas bill, Everything is in the name of the person, and it can be attached on a maritime lien. So they get the in-person accounts, if you will, but they also get the res in rem, and that is the body itself. So if a person is convicted of a crime, they get the body. Where do they put the body? They transport it to a warehouse. What is the warehouse? It's the penitentiary, or it's the county jail. They hold the body, they make money off of the body, plus they also hold the person as far as attachments and restitution comes into play. So they're going to make money off the interim jurisdiction, which is the holding of the body, and it's to, to my knowledge, let's say it costs a penitentiary uh, uh, 8 or $9 a day to house an inmate but they're going to turn around and they're going to bring in per inmate 90 some dollars a day. That's the private side that they're tapping. 
That's the holding of the res, in rem. But see, they're also going to hold the person in persona jurisdiction. So if there's any uh, restitution to be made on the public side, they're able to attach any account in the person's name, the all cap name, whether it's a garnishment of wage, a garnishment of Social Security payments. Uh, David and I have a very close friend who is experiencing just that, the garnishment of a private trust in the person's name. It's just not right. They're collecting on both sides. They're collecting on the private side, and they're collecting on the public side. And this is something Tetley discusses. And Tetley says, the U.S. is basically in like no other country because they will hold the res and they will hold the person, and they will collect off of both. And if anyone here has been to court and they've been through this and that and the other, They've witnessed it firsthand. I have a family member who's going through the same thing. They're going into the person for restitution, and they're also holding the body, the res, and they're collecting from the private side. Every day he is incarcerated. They're doing the same thing, and it's all maritime. This whole freaking thing is on the vessel. Um, Look at Matthew 13 in Scripture. It talks about Yeshua, the Son of Man. Before he talks to the crowd, he hops into a boat before he starts speaking. What is being said here? Why did he have to get into the boat before he started speaking? If I'm speaking to a crowd of 5,000, I want to get to a higher elevation, like a pulpit, if you will, so everyone can see me and everyone can hear me. He got into a boat on the sea. What is the significance of him doing that? The vessel on the sea, it, it's this, this, this entity here, this world, is mimicking Scripture. And the way it's using it is through maritime jurisdiction, vessels at sea. You, you read this article. I'll get, it, I'll get the link over to David, and he can post it on the Google group so everyone can read exactly what I'm referencing. But Tetley, he, he describes it all. It's all right there. It's all vessel at sea. It's all maritime jurisdiction, plain and simple. Now I'm out of breath, David. <laughs> <laughs> I, it, it, it's just there. You, yeah. you just, just read it. I, I implore everyone listening, hearing this voice, to read this article, and we'll get it posted. It is all right there. It's all maritime vessel jurisdiction. And Tetley even says, in rem cannot apply to a state-owned vessel and or a vessel in a non-commercial capacity. David Clarence has taken that first hurdle. He's in the non-commercial capacity. They can't touch it. Now, the only thing they can do is go in persona. They cannot touch the res, the body. The body is there. Unless it signs into a contract um, uh, against it, they cannot touch the body. All they can touch is the person. And, you know, that's something that we're going to have to discuss about all of that stuff. Um, So, you know, if anyone has any questions or comments, uh, you know, you're welcome. How's it get so schmott? Blessings from the Father in heaven. <laughs> I'm telling you, I, I I I can't explain it. It's just there. Read it and, and you'll see it. It's right there. It's all maritime jurisdiction. And here here okay, here's the cool part about this, and, and you and I were talking about this, David. He goes in to explain the of attaching something on a maritime lien. And it's, it's fairly simple. It's an affidavit. It's a, it's a due process. Hey, hey, don't go start now. Don't, no, stop. Hey, 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 Okay, we lost Timothy for a couple of minutes. Too much background noise.
Anybody have any questions, comments? It's 35. Uh, would, you, would you like to call in and uh, identify yourself and... Uh, Voice your uh, criticisms? Of course not. We know who you are. Hey, Dave. Hey. Jump in here while Timothy's uh, occupied. Where did uh, Uncle Doug go to? Where's the what? Where did Uncle Doug go to? Uncle Doug, I don't know. <laughs> no. Ladybug, you have a question, but I never answered him. Uh, well, they're all sexual. <clears throat> Matrimonial <clears throat> questions, rather. I answered your question as best as I best I could. <clears throat> I'm not your type. <laughs> David, did you say guest thirty five? Who's guest thirty five? Uh I can't say. Okay. I'll tell you later. All are welcome. Please join the call. You got questions, concerns, comments, now's the time. Hop on mm-hmm. in. Let's let's discuss it. Just thirty five it mysteriously just left the chat. <laughs> well, maybe he or she is gonna join the call here in a minute. I doubt that. Hello, gentlemen. They they logged back in as seventy uh seventy six or seventy seven now. Hello, young man. How are you? Hi, I'm new to this call. I do know Ladybug. I have the pleasure of knowing her. My name is Carlos again. I just logged in because I saw you guys on live. And uh, I'm glad to be here. I just wanted to ask a couple of questions. If may I? I would like to find out if uh, you were talking about uh, co- uh, maritime links, right? And uh, I've been interested in learning about that, so if you have any comments. Uh, uh, we were talking about what? I'm sorry, I couldn't understand you. Maritime links? Oh, uh, maritime links. Yeah. Something you can get in a lot of trouble with. Okay. Uh, Tim Turner's, I think it is, is working on that. Uh, it... Uh, uh, so not something you want to do lightly. Right. Okay. I, I I have personal experience with a man I know here from Pennsylvania that got uh, <laughs> all total about six or seven years in state penitentiary for UCC liens, and uh, they obviously were pretty good liens. It took uh, the uh, <laughs> legal resources of a very large uh, insurance company uh, in Philadelphia uh, about three years to get those liens off of them. Okay. And, you know, so they they obviously had some merit. Uh, when you start leaning powers to be uh, in your status that uh, we're all... Uh, uh, enslaved under that all capitalized name, it, it can have negative connotations, impacts on you that uh, uh, things you're not going to want to deal with. You know, so I'm not saying not to do it. Uh, I'm just saying be very careful and uh, understand that it could very well result in you spending the rest of your life in a in a penitentiary somewhere or something. And we don't want to go there. The only no. uh, reason it, it sparked my interest, uh, maybe that uh, that would help us stop the uh, or hold on to uh, our properties in case of foreclosure. Mm. 
that was the only reason, so that we could put in some kind of insurance so we don't lose our homes as easy. Oh, you want to lien your own prop, uh, yeah. land or property. Right. Uh, yeah, I, I, I don't see any uh, immediate neg- negative impact to you doing that. You're not doing it against someone else. Uh, but they're, they're not going to like it. Uh, that's what they're using, all admiralty law. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, the point is that whether they like it or not, the point is that I need to protect my my roof over my head. Yes, you I do. Keep that roof over my family, and eventually, we're a lot of us is, are going that way. Yeah. Because I'm just seeking for more than one way to keep us afloat. Well, everybody is looking for the silver bullet, and we understand why. Yeah. Because there's a lot of vampires out there trying to suck the blood out of you. Yep. Uh, uh, we'll we'll post that Tetley article or a link to it. Uh, I, I should have already put that up on the Google group, either in the discussions or uh, files section, and uh, I'll do both one uh, one or the other or both of them, uh, hopefully by tomorrow. And you folks will be able to look at that yourself. It's excellent. This is. Uh, this is an attorney, a professor of uh, of law, and uh, his he did his homework really well. He really lays this uh, admiralty uh, jurisdiction and its impacts uh, out very well, and and uh, and backs it all up with uh, citations to his research. It's. Uh, when you read that, though, you have to read it with a discriminating eye and understand the, the double meaning of the words that he's using. Right. See? Uh, then you'll understand which he's discussing, the private or the public side. I understand a little bit about that. Yeah. Okay. And uh, Ladybug uh, says that you were hitting on her about two weeks ago? Yeah. Or she was she was hitting on you about two weeks ago? I don't know. Both ways, I guess. Oh. <laughs> See, I, I knew Lady Bug was a cougar. No, I, I had the pleasure of meeting her in Vegas. Yeah. I had a great time in a, in a little crowd in a very respectful manner. Yeah. She's nice. Yeah. She lets me pick on her. Yeah, and what is what? The, uh, your group? Is that a good group? Uh. Well, we we have uh, the County Notary Google Group, the highest office in law. If you just type County Notary, all one word, into any search engine, the link to the Google Group, highest office in law, will come up. <laughs> and, and what about land patents? Uh, we don't have anything on there uh, presently. Um we're going to put a. a we're probably going to reactivate uh, the Federal Circuit website that had all that, a lot of research in that area and other areas uh, on there before, and uh, we'll put that back up again and discuss it here and put a, a link to it on the Google group. Okay. Actually, I found uh, Angela Stark follows your, your uh, program. For this program, uh-huh. and I found that she followed this, and I I wanted to follow what she followed, and I ended up here. Angela Stark on uh, Sam Davis's call. Uh, I, I I don't know if that's that's where where she's at, but but I think she she does also visit that that site. Hmm. Let me do it. I could be wrong though, but uh, I've been doing it in a good yeah in a good manner. Good yeah. Trying to learn and stay yeah. We we don't we don't advocate or uh deal with commerce issues here. Right. Uh, and that's not what we're doing here tonight. Uh, yeah, even though we're discussing Federal Reserve notes and things, our our interest is the private side. Right. That yeah. we've that yeah, that we've discovered. And that's, 
you see, folks, we've all been indoctrinated and conditioned all our lives to just think and be public and think and be public and think and be public. Uh, I have no concept or, or inkling that this private side exists. And that's where we need to be. See? That's where all the benefits are. That That's where the uh, recognition of your foreign sovereign immunity status is, is on the private side. And uh, one, once it's recognized on the private side, and they do recognize that you have it there, uh, but, but once you change your status uh, and cure that defect of that original granting uh, with your footprints, then the private is uh, uh, superior to the, the to the public. It always is. If you read the exceptions uh, in Title Twenty Eight United States uh, Code, excuse me, burping on my tea here. Uh, it spells out that it has to be substantial commercial activity. Let's see. And uh, to uh, to uh, cause a situation where your uh, foreign sovereign immunity state status isn't recognized, and and that is recognizing you as a foreign state, say a nation unto yourself, uh, under Yahweh. Uh, a uh, foreign bank of central issue. Say, it's not subject to uh, the uh, the admiralty law, uh, the military, uh, U U.S. jurisdiction, if you will. Is that all you had, had Carlos? Uh, no, I'm listening very carefully, and um, I am into I am into private. I like the system of that, the fact that everything is a trust. I like yeah. nothing about trust, and I just follow some some other respected persons as you, who do believe in trust. Everything is a trust, and we should have everything. We should have everything in private. In in public, we don't gain anything. Uh, they're probably they're probably saying we're not. Or they're, well, they're, they're I, trusts are private. Right. Yes, I understand. Uh, sc scripture is, is all trust, and the private side of that is your personal relationship with your Creator, Yahweh Father, and uh, His only begotten Son, Yeshua. The name of the trust is the Holy Spirit. Actually, the Bible is a trust. It's our trust. Uh, it's what? It's a trust. The, uh, the whole scripture is trust law. That's what I'm, that's what I'm trying to say. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, there's admi admiralty and commerce in there. Uh, but uh, it, it's all trust law. Thank you, and I'll keep back and keep listening. Thank you. You're very welcome, young man. Okay, Ladybug, you want to call in and start something? <laughs> what what report today found on a website 84 the catholic church is facing an ex existential crisis these days the catholic church is facing an existential crisis these days as a result of the external crisis uh, <laughs> okay, Ladybug. <laughs> Hi, Dave. It's Betty here. Hey. How are you? Pretty good. Good. Um, my email wasn't working for a day. I don't know. I had sent you off an email stating about the link off of your website on the Cotton Bales Court case. Uh, you're saying that that download doesn't work? That's right. I couldn't get it to work on either computer. Look look for the file in the file section. Cotton I thought that I had. Uh, 
should be a PDF file there. I'm I'm not looking at it right now myself, but oh, here I have the website. I can look right at it. Uh, let's see here. If uh, Vista will behave itself. The file was there, but I couldn't get it to download. Okay. 26 U.S. 551. I just clicked on it. Federal Circuit site, I used to test all the downloads all the time. Uh Uh-huh. Okay, it's I'm getting an error from Adobe. You're right. Uh, I'll look into that. Thank you. I, okay. I wanted to do that, and it slipped on my mind with everything else that's going on. I can imagine. Yeah. Uh, thank you for bringing that to my attention. Um, I do have a question on UCCs. If you have a few minutes. <laughs> You don't like UCCs. Go ahead. Um, uh, this guy, Dean, that was taking care of his aunt for 14 right. years, right. they they did a, um affidavit of obligation. And she thought it was worth a million dollars a year for him to take care of her. So they agreed for $15 million, And then for him to put a lien against the house in that amount, in case anything ever happened, like what did happen in her case. Mm-hmm. Well, he tried to file it in Cleveland, in Cuyahoga County, and they wouldn't file it because it wasn't a fixture lien. So then we sent it off to Georgia, but I don't know. Uh, I guess we need to somehow get it off to Columbus. Well, if you get it recorded anywhere, you get a certified copy from the official that recorded that, that that appears on their docket, their record, their files. And then you file that with the county or wherever you want to file it. They'll then have to accept that. At least they should. <laughs> okay. And, and, and what? No, no, I'm not suggesting you do that, but uh, if that's what you want to do. There was one problem with it. The description of the land, the wording, they only allowed you so much text, and it didn't copy. So I guess they, he would have to correct that anyway, correct? You, you mean, mean the, the meet, meets and the bounds? Yeah. Either that or reference the deed recording, book and page number, and the office where it's recorded. You don't have to do the uh, entire uh, meets and bounds description. You just uh, attach a copy of the deed, a certified copy of the deed to the UCC-1. Would as, uh, as an addendum. Okay, but that would have to be recorded as well, because I think all they did was mention the tax ID number and the parcel number. Um, well, those are all uh, kind of zero in on that deed, that that real estate either the the recording of the deed or the tax or the parcel number they're, they're going to all zero in on that so there can't be any mistake as to what's being described uh, I don't know if you can attach something to a UCC one or not I, I I may have used some of those back in the early 90s uh, I think there's some things on file somewhere he did, he, that, that he did. I did when I was experimenting with uh, such concepts he did a UCC three um, as well, you know, to amend it to do the the title. Uh-huh. So, as long as they're doing it amongst themselves and they're not doing it to any judge or, you know, anybody, there's not going to be any kind of repercussion. Do you think? No, it's all private. That's what I thought. Yeah. And as as much as we can be, as you can. As we can be private in using that name on all caps, 
they they just can't record anything in the public having to do with us as as men and women uh, with living spirits. It, it, if you try and do that, even in the description, it's not going to be regarded as being private. It, it'll all, always be regarded as being done by that name in all caps. Unless you do a notary commission oath and silver bond correctly, <laughs> obviously. <laughs> so. uh, okay, but, so but the it, fact that it was recorded in Georgia, you believe that if he takes it down again to, or I take it because I'm his power of attorney while he's being detained, his court date's at the end of the month, um, that they will honor it and record it this time? That's the law. Do you know what law that is? I'm going to write it down right now. Full faith and credit clause, the United States Constitution. All the acts the acts of, of every state shall be respected and regarded and uh, 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 acknowledged by every other state. You just... That's the argument. If they say no, say, whoop, what's your oath to? The United States Constitution? Bring it out. Say, here's the full faith and credit clause. I used that on a U.S. court clerk. And he did an about face immediately when he was refusing to record a notary judgment. Okay. And David, and remember, the Foreign Sovereign Immunities Act is touched on by Tetley in this article. He yes. mentioned the Foreign Sovereign Immunities Act. They recognize it. They know yep. it's there, and they know what it means. And and it it, it it the it's their admiralty jurisdiction that has to recognize it. And everything okay. they're doing in these courts is admiralty. I'm sorry, dear. We didn't mean to over talk you. No, I I was going to ask him. I came in late. What was the article he was talking about? Uh, We'll post that up on the Google group, either in the discussions or the file section or both tomorrow. Timothy, do you have that, that we can do that, or a link to it? Yes, I'll email it to you when I uh, get to a computer. I'll email you the article, and you can just post the article. Okay, but it's on, it, it, it's on Tetley's website. Just type in Tetley, and it's going to take you to Tetley's sp- Maritime Law. Something. Spell that Spell that for them. T E T L E Y, just like the T. Tetley. Yeah. Okay. Okay. And Thank the you. name of the sure you're welcome. And the name of the article it's um, uh, what was it? Mer um, attachment of um liens and attachments in the maritime jurisdiction, something like yeah. that. He has many yeah. articles. Okay, gotcha. Thank you much. Okay, dear. That's what they're using in a cotton picking court, Admiralty Law. Maritime flag with a fringe around it. It's not martial law, it's maritime law. Oh, I know that. Okay, have a good one then. Thank you. Thank you, dear. Timothy? Oh, you're muted out again. Well, you'll pop in and out as you can. I know you're busy uh, with your other responsibilities. Shut that cotton picking beer joint down. (laughs) Just kidding, it's not a beer joint, folks. But, uh, if you read that Tetley article uh, concerning maritime law, he just puts it all together. It, it explains everything, and uh, uh, it, it, he tells you what's going on and how they're doing it in the courts and what to do about it. And it goes into into maritime liens, and I'm not suggesting you do those things. <laughs> Uh, you need to be careful. Uh, wise as a serpent. 
say, as meek as a lamb. Yes, and I and I touch on those points for exactly that. As Scripture says, be wise as a serpent and gentle as a dove. Yeah. Know exactly what they're doing. Know exactly what they're doing. And Tetley explains it from A to Z, exactly what they're doing. And it, it reminds me of uh, um, what I've read and heard of uh, Tim Turner's um, process of the maritime lean. And it, from all the accounts that I've ever heard, he's basically mastered that process. And from, every, from others that I've heard from, he, he, he has it down. And he, he knows what's being done. The affidavit, the um, 10 days or 20 or 30 days, um, the, you know, they receive the mailings and they do not respond. And then there's the affidavit and then there's the judgment. That, that's all maritime lien and attachment, plain and simple. And it, even Tetley says it's very simple on how it's done. And that's exactly how the United States functions as well as every single court that I've, I've seen within the United States. That's exactly how they function. Could it's this all be, admiralty. Could this be it? Arrest, attachment, and related maritime law pr- procedures, PDF, 1999, yes. 73 Tulane Law Review, 1895-1985. Yes. yes, that's it. That's okay. The one. One. Yes, and it talks about the arrest. Uh, and I've heard the story of of the man standing in court and saying, pointing at the judge, "I arrest your bond," and that judge probably turning ghost white because that judge knows exactly what was meant there. It's a maritime lien and attachment on his or her bond. Mm-hmm. They know exactly what's going on. Exactly what's going on. They've run out, and I've heard they've run right out of the courtroom. Rightfully so. They don't want to be arrested. And they know it can be done by anyone. It's powerful stuff. It's one thing walking into a courtroom and not knowing anything about what's going on or having a perception of what's going on that is not even close to exactly the truth. But think about if you walked into that courtroom knowing exactly what was going on, knowing there was a lien, a maritime lien, and a maritime attachment, you are then wise as the serpent. You know exactly what's going on. And then you can be as gentle as that dove, and you can get the job done. You know, you you bring up the lien and attachment in Admiralty. Ask them, is this an in rem or in persona or both? Where's the attachment? You know, it's all right there. It's exactly what they're doing day in and day out. And they're attempting to collect on the private side and the public side. They're attempting to take the whole thing. And that's exactly what we've been doing. We know the prepaid treasury account exists. It does exist. It is there. Yes, it does, doesn't it? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. one of 1,000 put that post up. Let me repeat that for those who are listening to the archives. This is the the title. Arrest, comma, attachment, comma, and related maritime law procedures. PDF, 1999. The citation is 73 Tulane, T-U-L period, L period for law. REV period for review, Tulane Law Review, 1895 to 1985. Type that in. A, uh, I just typed it in Google, thanks to uh, 101,000. I came up with a link, the same one that Ben had, and uh, I didn't see Ben had posted it. <clears throat> and thank you both. And uh, and you, Timothy. Uh, I know you'll pop back in here when you can. Does anyone else have any questions, comments, or guest 35? Uh, you're back in here as... Uh, wait a minute, I'm not sure right now. Uh, did you want to identify yourself and 
offer some criticism out in the open. No? Anybody else? Questions, comments, criticism? Okay, we'll pause for a station identification. This is David Clarence, expressly reserving all liberties, a notary on the land, York County, Nation, Pennsylvania, uh, near the uh, corporation uh, barfly-infested county of York, uh, and the uh, corporation uh, Commonwealth of Pennsylvania, near those. Regretfully, not far enough away, or at least I didn't used to be. And uh, legal status definitely changed, folks. Seeing evidence of it all the time seemed to be off the radar. No jurisdiction. David. Yes. I have a question. And to Timothy also. Uh, per last week's call, should we still be possibly following the clues that the two of you were laying out in uh, regards to the Department of Commerce seal? Well, uh, we're explaining the things that we've been given by Yahweh to you. Uh, and, and relating it to our experience and what we're uh, finding and uh, being given. Uh, they're not per se clues on how to do what we've been shown how to do. Uh, I will keep... Uh, it, maybe that's not what you mean, but uh, l let me say this anyway for you folks, and I know there's... Uh, at least one <laughs> individual out there that's trying to duplicate this. Uh, no, I know there's two. Uh, you, you don't have the sufficient uh, knowledge uh, on how to do this. It, 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 when, when the chairman of the Federal Reserve said it was a surprise move, he was serious. They never expected anybody to be able to do this. Uh, seriously, national treasure request stuff. Now, I'm I'm sure there's only about uh, what 12 billion people out there on the planet that are smarter than I am. Uh, they may very well be able to do what I couldn't do, but Timothy and I have and will continue to testify that we could not have done this using our own. Uh, uh, brain power, my one brain cell and, and his entire brain. Okay. You know, uh, you, you just, you, you're just not going to do it. it. It's the symbolism you've got to, uh, to be able to recognize and, and then understand it and, and how to apply that and where to apply it. That you're going to run up against. They, they've, they, these were masons that hid this stuff. That, that's why I, I say that you, uh, you don't have to be a, a mason. Uh, I misstated that, but it, it was I, for the life of me. I tried to figure out for years why I ever got involved with that uh, outfit. Um, I, I accepted. Uh, or I asked to be sponsored into the Blue Lodge, the Masonic Lodge, because of my interest in uh, serving an association or an organization that did the charity work that they appear to do on the on the public side and do do, um, uh, and not do 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 do. But uh, I found out that it was more than that, and, and then I utilized my insatiable quest for knowledge and started doing a lot of research in, uh, in uh, 
assets and collections that are only available in those lodge libraries. You, you can't find them anywhere else. Uh, you, you'd have to spend a few years in there, or at least, uh, and accomplish what I was able to to learn. I, I have another enable you to have uh, I would say a 50-50 chance of, of being able to accomplish this and I'm not just saying this to discourage people you can go waste all the time you want to uh, trying whatever you want to try uh, I, 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 good luck I, I, I think you're, you have a better shot at going buying a lottery ticket so thank you I'm sorry for interrupting you. Oh, that's okay. Uh, how about another way of looking at it? Uh, possibly the U.S. of A. versus the U.S. <laughs> You're asking for more clues. <laughs> like I'm going in the right direction, maybe. <laughs> Is this a uh, uh, resistor? <laughs> no. This is one of 1,000s. Ah, thank you for that link. You bet. That's what it's all about. Or, yeah, for that dis- that article. Good job. Did you know what about that, or did you find it? No, I just uh, listened to you guys talking and then uh, just kind of jumped on the website there and did some digging and, you know, thank Timothy. He's the one that was, you know, talking about it, and he got my curiosity peaked once again. Oh, he found it. I- I'll tell you what, folks. Uh, it was difficult to contain him on Tuesday when he when he found that and started reading it. I had to sit here and listen to two and a half hours of him reciting that article. <laughs> uh, can, can you mute your phone out in the background there? Unless you are talking to me. <laughs> Star six. Do I have to start uh, hunting you down? Oh, please don't make me do this. Thank you. No, you didn't do it yet. Uh, Let's see. Which one am I going to pick on? See if that was it. Bingo. (laughs) My good or what? I have another question, David, if you don't mind. Uh, go ahead. Uh, last week you were kind of divulging some information about possibly setting up something to where you're going to, uh, I guess, maybe share more with uh, folks that you were going to basically uh, help out in a better way, I guess, trying to not basically throw out what you were talking about last week, I guess, indirectly. Maybe you can refer, you can understand what I'm referring to. Well, we're not in a position, uh, we're not ready to do that yet. Do you anticipate uh, time soon or no? Well, the, the way we, Timothy and I look at this, uh, it, it's not a lo- uh, Powerball win, see. Um, it, this knowledge of this, how to do it, is absolutely from uh, Yah- Yahweh Father. So uh, we look at it as it's to be used to... Um, benefit his righteous children, as he says in his scripture. That that can't possibly be me. me. <laughs> Just it can't be. That that's impossible. Uh, so I can't be his righteous children. Uh, T- Timothy may be. He he. I would say be closer uh, than I am, and he'll probably deny that also. Uh, so it's to serve Father Yahweh. He will give it to us what to do. He's already giving us some hints. Um, we'll explain to that in, in, uh, as we're prepared to do that. Uh, I, I can sit here all night and give you conjecture and guesses and guesstimates and things like that. And uh, it, 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 It's not to go out and buy uh, 200 thousand dollar plus cars and and a mansion in the mountains uh that's not what it's about and that may seem extravagant uh, but the way i look at it is the the people that that i work with that are around me are important to me and 
the cause that I serve, who, and that cause is my Yahweh Father's cause. I'm not going to put them out there on the highway in Toyotas, that they can be rammed by an SUV or a tractor trailer and maybe killed or maimed or something like that. I want to give them the best chance of surviving in that passenger's compartment as possible because it's just a slaughterhouse out there. Uh, secondly, uh, that that uh, uh, land uh, may seem like a guilted cage, but in, in fact it's not. Uh, it, it's just a well-constructed <laughs> stone uh, dwelling uh, with, with other st- stone uh, dwellings there. There's enough uh, acreage uh, to... Uh, add other things that we uh, have been kicking around uh, doing. And one thing will probably drive that affluent area crazy is putting in a few hundred uh, pads for campers. (laughs) And the uh, uh, utilities and uh, um, uh, waste disposal uh, to handle all that. Uh, We may do that. Uh, it, it's either that or build an awfully big building with a lot of rooms, you know, and restrooms and things. And uh, uh, people can come there maybe and bring their, their campers or or we can go buy campers and uh, slide out uh, fifth wheels. You know, they're pretty spacious, can handle a lot of people, and it, it won't cost that much. You know, it may seem like it's going to be an awful lot, but... Uh, uh, I, I'm, I'm kind of a chiseler. Uh, I, I'm going to remain... Uh, uh, Blue jeans. Uh, yes. Um, <laughs> uh, I, I'm still washing out paper, uh, plastic uh, bags, folks. Uh, <laughs> a loaf of bread came in, rinsing it out and, and using it over. Uh, I, my, I just won't change. Uh, I'm just frugal as by nature, so uh, that that seems uh, maybe a good plan. I, I'm not, I'm not sure. We're not a hundred percent confident in what that that uh, resource will be for, but that I was sent to that about a year ago. Uh, just directed to it, and and it has nothing to do with um, uh, w- wanting to live there. I, I like it here, South Central Pennsylvania. This is my home, uh, and, and I don't plan on relocating out there. Uh, I'm going to maintain a base here, uh, f- maybe for no other reasons than the notary offices here. But I, I know in my heart of hearts that this is not the, the place to be <laughs> when the judgment comes. Uh, scripture says, uh, flee to the mountains and do not turn back for your cloak. Uh, these are not the mountains, and I'm not sure that I can uh, reliably say that the Appalachian Mountains will qualify as mountains either. The one mountain range... Uh, on this continent, it's recognized as truly being mountains, uh, not even the Sierras, California, it's the Rockies. Uh, sure. You know, so it's, it's uh, kind of given to me that that's the spot to be uh, where Yahweh will uh, create a sanctuary for his, for his children. Uh, that's, my role is just to be a uh, um, uh, conservator, you know, uh, of that. Uh, out of that, I get a bedroom, <clears throat> an attached bath, and a study. That not much, that much bigger than uh, the apartment and the uh, um, uh, uh, some uh, half apartment that I that I had in York. It's not that much bigger. It's grander. Oh, yeah, it's grander. <laughs> it, it doesn't mean anything to me, folks. A chair is comfortable. It's comfortable. I don't I don't care uh, how old it is, uh, how much it costs, <clears throat> what it looks like necessarily. 
It's so it's either just comfortable for me or it's not. You know. I don't, I mean, I don't need. Question. Yeah. Go I'm ahead. Sorry. Um, not no disrespect to uh, Pat. No, uh, you got to interrupt me. I'll just ramble and ramble. Oh, that's okay. <laughs> they can talk over you. Um, I'm just curious uh, if uh, Patrick is getting any closer to what he's trying to achieve, in essence, the same as, as you two have been blessed by. Uh, no. That's all I can say. Okay. I, I'm I'm not fully up on, on what he's doing. Uh, Timothy says no. Okay. Thank you. You're you're very welcome, young man. That was I easy. I have a question. Batter up. Go ahead. Excuse me. Um, you mentioned earlier uh, living spirit. Are you a um, how do I say that a living soul on the land? Nope. Soul is a personality. That's what's talking to you and interacting with you right now. And Cor- soul- corporations corporations have souls. The fact that the the rotten Roman cult has used the corporate soul as a trust to uh, uh, hold all of their holdings for centuries is proof of that's not a living spirit. It's something else. Uh, I am a living spirit. At least okay. I, I believe I have one. Did I answer your question? Uh, you gave me the, the other two diff- definitions, yeah. Yeah. See, we're, in the public, we're trained to regard uh, our living spirits as souls. They do that deliberately to to uh, shut off your ability to figure out how to access your creator. And, and all these churches, they don't talk about living spirits. You know, uh, I'll give you a third example. It's not the holy soul. <laughs> See, it's the holy spirit. So it's the spirit, not the personality. And one of 1,000 just typed in there, Job 32, uh, 8. Thank you. You're welcome. I have to make you a co-host here or something. You're doing great. Uh (laughs) (laughs) Uh-oh. There goes the neighborhood. (laughs) Can't get any worse than this Dutchman does. Yeah, <clears throat> folks. Uh, the private side of those Federal Reserve notes, uh, boy, <laughs> it, it's such a benefit to you. That, that's where all this, uh, uh, these assets are coming from, and and being moved over. Have, have have already been moved over. It's all been done on the private side. The proof of that is the PDF files and the links to the uh, the court cases and the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania all being uh, changed to uh, or uh, legacy docket numbers being added to those cases and then being sanitized. I absolutely didn't uh, scrub those judges' names and arresting officer and uh, prosecuting attorneys' uh, information and and the filers, uh, whoever filed the documents on the docket. I didn't do that. I I didn't dress those up or or erase them. And you can go on the the link to the Commonwealth uh, of Pennsylvania Court of Common Fleas website. Go to Common Fleas, please, court. Uh, put your mouse over there, a window will pop up, a uh, menu, and go to the bottom there and choose the dockets and uh, put the name in there, just like it is off those dockets, and you'll find them. They're still there for now. Uh, we we thought that they were going to disappear. Um, they may yet. I'm, I'm, we're not sure. Uh, you know, um, a, a lot of this is kind of experimental for us. It's all been experimental uh, because I, we don't get uh, angelic visitations. Uh, you know, uh, we we get, we're given ideas, concepts, uh, discernment, and uh, once in a while I get a two-by-four upside the head to get my attention. Uh, but 
and and I'll say again, <laughs> Yahweh Father, I, I would appreciate it if you just <laughs> gave me the whole uh, enchilada all laid out, and so I <laughs> I got an idea of what's going on, and I'll have to grope around in the dark uh, trying to find your light of uh, of truth, but we'll continue to do your way, do it your way, of course. Guest 92 is saying there's a plaque over the door lentil of the DTC as scripture Job 32.8 is written. Well, now that'd be interesting. Uh, did you have something else, young man? Jump in there. Uh, Summit Glory. Uh, if you emailed me and that hit on the Sabbath, uh, you haven't gotten an answer yet. That's why. Um, I normally don't answer telephones or emails on Sabbath day. So, I, I, I try and do my uh, Yahweh Father's uh, work on those days. Did you have anything else, young man? Well, I guess I might as well ask you. Yeah, I had uh, tried to do a, what was I say, dismissal of a case, and I got it returned back saying it was incomprehensible. Uh, you were ordering the case dismissed? After I had assigned it to to myself, being an absence, uh, no judge being there, and you, having you can't a, you can't assign it to yourself. You have to assign it to your court that you are the judge of. Uh, as a sovereign See, standing in court. Well, you you are court. The, you are the court wherever you are. Black's Law Dictionary says that you are under the definition of court. Correct. But but you cannot. Uh, say that I'm doing this and I'm doing that. You you can't do that. You have to function as the court. Isn't that what the barfly does? Uh, he he signs everything by the court. See, he, he's yelling at you, arguing and uh, threatening you there from the bench in his black dress. Uh, but everything that's signed is by the court. You have to function as the court. See. That, that's what uh, Regan uh, has and probably continues to tell them, Regan Reedy, is that he is the court. Uh, the magistrate or the judge will uh, has, he reports, comes back and says, well, I'm the magistrate here. And he comes back and says, you were until I stepped foot on, this, on the land of this county. Now I'm the magistrate here, see. <clears throat> when, and he should have said, I'm, I'm the court here, and this court is superior to yours. This is trust law, not admiralty or whatever you're doing, commerce or whatever. Yes, it's Regan Duane, one of 1,000. Uh, I actually thought I had said that. Yeah, you you may have. It's uh, I I don't know what to tell you. Everybody's smarter than I am. Uh, it's taken me a long, uh, sixteen, seventeen years of retraining my one brain cell to say the right words and use the right terminology, and I still get it wrong. The guest thirty-five was in here ragging on me earlier that I said I got a Social Security uh, check and. Uh, uh, cashed it and gave uh, two thirds of it away in a previous broadcast, and uh, uh, it, they're they're just trying to uh, attack me. And uh, and I told them the truth. Why well, didn't get it? I just intercepted. It wasn't sent to me. <laughs> you know. Uh, mm -hmm. You know. So anyway. Well, I'll keep trying. Yeah, I'll keep trying. You, I, I guarantee you, young man, you are the court. 
And, and that's not just my opinion. I, I've been doing this since 94. They just don't want me in their courtrooms. The the only court that's that's had the, <clears throat> the audacity, <clears throat> Barfly, allow me to be brought into their religious proceedings since 1994 as the U.S. District Court in, in Harrisburg, Pennsylvania, and they're all regretting it. And the marshals are still whining about that experience. You know, when you when you can cause the United States Marshal Service to whine that that it takes them eight hours to find a county jail somewhere that they can house you in, uh, obviously you know something, or somebody's uh, Yahweh is giving you something, is watching over you. The angel is working overtime. <clears throat> so. So here we actually uh, use the stuff that we talk about, uh, and uh, and suggest to you, and and use it first before we uh, turn it loose on you. Hey, David, you on? Yes. Let me let me say one last thing. <clears throat> I. I you're on the right track, but it's like we've said: the, your realization of that liberty of being recognized that you're the court will take place in that space between your ears and nowhere else. It won't take place in your paperwork. You've absolutely got to believe it. It probably won't work for you if you don't. I'm sorry for interrupting you. Go ahead. No, no, no. I, I completely agree with it. Actually, that's kind of why I'm. I got you some email uh, earlier in the week about uh, my friend Adam. I mentioned him to you, mm-hmm. and uh, and I, I completely agree with this. Yeah, I understand that. It's kind of why I'm I'm bucking up to a lot of things. And uh, well, this week's been pretty interesting, actually. <laughs> but uh, but for what it's worth, you know, my focus is is certainly on on uh, on Adam right now. And this has been an ongoing situation for his family for as long as I've known him. And uh, and I've I can see the quality in this approach, hands down. And for what it's worth, you know, I can completely have that in perspective when I go into court with this kind of thing. However, you know, naturally, I don't I don't have the administrative uh, aspect of this down. I don't really understand the yeah you know, the paperwork whatsoever. You see, I'm, I'm lacking well, on all that. Tri- the bar fly will trip you up. You have to remember, he's he has a, a juris doctorate in twisting language. Exactly. And and he'll trip you up by saying, "Are you the president judge of your court?" <laughs> if you say yes, you're done. Exactly. Because those things only exist in corporate jurisdictions. See, <clears throat> yeah, he'll try and trip you up with something like that, and they got a whole repertoire of of things to say. You know, they 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 think on their feet, even I'm the dumbest that. ones. Yeah. Yeah, I'm expecting if, it. It's yeah. just that I don't know all that stuff yet, obviously. I, I've never gone in there with a pre, pre-planned uh, dissertation of, of what to say. No, I've never done that. Uh, it, it's like Yeshua says. He, he will uh, put the words in my mouth. He, he's done that. And not just in our courtrooms, interacting with our clerks and uh, and other officials and the marshals. and, and it, it, They think it's uh, that I gave them a hard row to hoe. Say, I, I didn't do that to them. <clears throat> Uh, Yahweh did. You can't explain that to them. They don't have any concept of what a God is. <clears throat> their God is their badge and their, their uh, uh, 40 caliber Glock. Well, what do we what do we do from this point on? I mean, I'm prepared as not, as much as I can be in the short amount of time I'm, I've been aware of this stuff. But um, as far as you know, what can I do right now with with what understanding I've got um, with with uh, you know, Adam's two kids looking at uh, well, they're looking at getting thrown in jail in the next month and a half for their whole story involved in this. And it, granted, it's all ridiculous. It's truly ridiculous. I, I would love to show you. It, it has nothing to do. Is. It has nothing to do with the issues. Mm-hmm. It ha- only has to do with a financial transaction. They're making money off of it. They're bonding it. I absolutely right. guarantee you they're doing that. 
Yeah, and I've understood that. Look, actually. look at those dockets. <laughs> and like you're saying earlier, you know, it's on the private and public side. But at this point, how can we come in there and neutralize that? I mean, essentially take their toy away from them. And that's that's all I want to do. I'm not out here for revenge. Um, I'm not going to approach the taking kind of thing. I just want to see this man back with his family. You're in trust law. That trumps theirs. Oh. So I should go up to or go to their court and uh, explain to them just how would I explain that exactly because, you know, what do I, I – mean, okay, granted, I understand that I'm the court in this respect. However, you know, what's – what are, I, don't, I don't know any of these procedures in this aspect. You know, that's, that's something I've not – I've been lucky enough not to be in court an awful lot. Well, at least not in the last 15 years. <laughs> My mom could testify to something other than that. You'd have to spend hundreds of thousands of hours in there to start to get as good as their as their uh, uh, four year uh, law students have been in practice four years. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah, hundred thousand uh, hours. You, you don't. No, you don't have the time to do that. So what I'm telling you is you don't have to know those things. You need to plug into Yahweh using the sacred name and Yeshua and ask them to put the words in your mouth and smite those uh, Philistines for you. So yeah, I like that. <laughs> that's that's all I've done. Um, I, I, I can sit here and, and crack jokes and things like that and come back to people and... Uh, because I'm just a wise acre by nature, uh, and I've had a lot of experience in in their courts over 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 more than 38 years. But I don't do it day in and day out like they do. I mean, it's all they do. Uh, it, it, if it was the comedy uh, uh, factory or something like that, I'd climb up on stage and, and wise crack with the audience or something, and probably be able to hold my own. Uh, and even though I have this experience and I have all this research behind me and this and that, uh, it's like I said, it's no joke. They have a Juris Doctorate in twisting the language. Uh, it, it, they're the gatekeepers of the knowledge. They keep it, keep us from that knowledge. Uh, it's, it's hard to match that, you know, really. Even if I wasn't suffering from, uh, or de- or rather dealing with, not suffering, dealing with a stroke, that uh, I hesitate all the time and stutter, uh, trying to get my my left side of my face and tongue to, to form the words uh, coherently that can somehow understand what I'm saying uh, before I can speak it. Um, it's. Uh, uh, just it's it's not my nature to be doing that in their, in dealing with them in their courtrooms. I just I absolutely when I was in there on August the third of last year, I got physically ill and I have a cast iron stomach. Uh, I was dry heaving in their waste can <laughs> in the courtroom. No joke. I, it, yeah, I I was just so overwhelmed by the evil <laughs> in that room. Yeah, it, it's not it, nerves. It's, oh it's, man, it's witchcraft. All it the way it home. is. It, it's just absolute evil in there. It it was unbelievable. That I feel energy, and uh, I sense it. And man, ah, horrendous experience. It was worse than the eighty nine days of solitary bed confinement that followed. <laughs> What's you know? the worst worst punishment? No, I, yeah. I completely agree. I was telling from the other day. Like, I shouldn't have said that out in the open. Now, he always knows what to do to me the next time. <laughs> <laughs> Make me attend court, their barfly courts for a week. Uh, I'll put you on a on cell phone when I'm in court. That we don't have to be in there. Yeah, I can't put the words in your mouth. I I don't have any idea what to tell you to say. I I can tell you what I've said. What uh, I can recite. What been reported to me about Regan said and and Jeffrey Dale up on uh, uh, Perry County, Pennsylvania. Uh, but you, you've got to have it yourself. 
I, I completely agree, and I'm, I think I'm actually getting, I'm getting a, a lot that I'm not talking about right now. But you mentioned earlier, and I've, and I've researched um, all of your uh, your stuff in your archives about the uh, the removal process mm-hmm. and and how effective that can be in this case. And I recognize that as kind of like the ultimate <laughs> overkill weapon. <laughs> I, I shouldn't tell people this again on these broadcasts. There is an example of that removal document on the Family Rights Network website. It remains there. If you type in David Clarence, you'll find a link to that. But folks, Where's don't that don't print that thing out and mail it to us <laughs> because it's no, it's going nowhere. Uh, you're wasting your 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 resources and your time. You know, and we don't need your donations. Thank you. We'll be returning the ones that uh, were sent to us shortly. Uh, but that spells out in there what you are, what court, and it and it uses the citations to their uh, codes, rules, and regulations in Title Twenty Eight. That's all it is. It cites the Foreign Sovereign Immunities Act, going back two or three years before Rod Class and Maria Shoemaker had any idea of it, of what that was, uh, previous to their discovering it. Uh, it's, uh, I believe if you get it in your head, <clears throat> and, and this, the only thing I said to that barfly up there in that U.S. District Court was that I am the court. And, and, and uh, and, and she said, uh, uh, well, that's the middle district court. And I responded uh, to that by saying, uh, you're either an idiot or a liar. I, I said, I will not support your religion. You cannot compel me to do that. Your oath, your contract says you cannot compel me to support your religion. And then she said the audacity to say it wasn't a religious practice taking place there. Uh, She's been on that bench too long to to believe that. <laughs> she, she had to be lying. Yeah. It, if you get it in your head that that's a, a an occult, pagan, uh, Luciferian religious practice going on there, and and you're a a, a, a Christian or, or a Buddhist or whatever, <clears throat> and you understand that in your religious beliefs. I would say that would be the best thing to have in your mind when you go in there mm-hmm. to understand what you're dealing with. And, oh, I agree. And don't, yeah, and don't worry about what else you're going to say about being the court and, and different things like that. It would be given to you. And knowing only a fragment of law to, to, to reinforce my position in that, I mean, again, that's where I feel like it would help to have some expertise within reach, I guess, because well, I've got those it, words and I've got that understanding. I'm a, I'm a heretic compared to, to what they're looking at. I mean, it, heretic slash terrorist, but it's just that I see that branded into my skull for sure. And I've, as much research as I've done in this the last week alone, it is just beyond obvious, even with the root of this stuff. Mm-hmm. But it still doesn't give me comfort knowing that two very close friends of mine, essentially brothers, are in less than a month to serve in time against this this this, this insanity, and I don't want to you know bring that down on them and say, well, we're going to go off kind of half cocked, so to speak, and end up getting you guys four years because that's kind of the ultimatum. If they were to they were told that if they're going to resist this or even so much as mention sovereignty, for example, then they're going to slap them with everything they've got. Do you know why they're threatening you them with that? Well, naturally, that's that's their only real uh, ammunition. They got going. two that cards. Pain. They have two cards: deception and intimidation. Yeah. It's a card game, uh, a, a game of uh, stud poker. Uh, uh, no, three card, uh, whatever it is. Three cards are up on the table. They're holding two uh, hold cards, and you're holding two hold cards. Their two whole cards are intimidation and deception. If they flip them over, you'll see they're two jokers. Yours are two aces. I like it. Really? I'm serious. I'm always pretty good at card games. All right. 
it may be though that uh, those individuals are are uh, under a, a correction. There may be absolutely nothing you can do to stop what's going to happen. Well, in fact, there isn't. It's whatever Yahweh's will is will it's happen. It, it, it 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 won't matter a tinker's dam <laughs> what you do. Uh, it's His will either way. It's His will. It's already predetermined. I believe that. Yeah, well, that certainly crossed my mind. And we talked about it too. So I'm you know, examining the heart yeah. really carefully to see where they're standing this because <laughs> I know them and you know I love them to death. But yeah, I wouldn't put it past them to need some adjustment. Yeah, I guess um, we not, not. I don't know if everybody needs it. I get, I know I need it, and I needed it. I got mine. It just seems odd that this whole family seems thoroughly plagued with this sort of situation. I mean, I've never seen anything like it. And uh, I mean, I can understand some discipline. I've certainly had my fair share. But this this seems like a deliberate attack of some sort. It's going to get worse. It, It doesn't get any better. If I've learned nothing in almost 63 years, it doesn't get any better. Clinton was better <laughs> than what what the Patriots are dealing with now. They'll tell you that. George Bush Sr. was better. <laughs> Even uh the uh uh the Bush Jean Junior was better than what they're they they're saying that anyway, what they're dealing with now. Yeah, it, it doesn't that. get any better. Remember, we all used to bag on on Clinton, and now we're thinking, "Oh God, if only we had him back." <laughs> you know, yeah. there were the days. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. As long as Hillary didn't get her hooks into anything, mm. she was actually the 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 sh- she's always been the the driving force and the talent behind that duo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember hearing he, talk about that. Yeah, he he's just a puppet master. That's all. The the front man. The, that's all the presidents are, or any politician is. They're, they're just talking heads. They're no different than newscasters on six o'clock news. They're just reading from script. <laughs> they don't really make any decisions. Hello, Reagan. No, they don't really make any decisions about anything. Not not anything important. See. So, uh, well, here's another question, just off the topic. It's uh, concerning the the peso scenario with the um, the silver. It was interesting. Uh, so I've got a lot of bills naturally, and uh, I've been looking into that, listening to a lot of things that uh, Lloyd has been saying. Looks like he's on here tonight, or what? But um. So 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 if I got this 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 uh, ticket, I should say, whatever the case is, uh, from driving on a street, a road, right? You know, they take your picture and your license, and they send you a bill. Familiar with that? Um, using a peso symbol, that's from uh, Lloyd uh, on Nebraska. That yeah, uh, I think he's on in here. Yeah, he he was. Uh, uh, he still is not called in, but he's on the internet, so I can talk about him. He can't uh, defend himself. Kind of never want him. That old sure. rascal. Uh, it's his research. Uh, our finding, uh, Timothy finding that uh, uh, commemoration over in Philadelphia at Rod Aaron uh, sign on a. Uh, attached to a wrought iron gate over there, uh, commemorating the first casting of uh, of the dollar si- sign. Okay. Uh, is a graphic on uh, County Notary Highest Office in Law Google Group mm-hmm. file section. <clears throat> uh, all derivative of uh, of Lloyd's uh, research. What Timothy was covering tonight is is just uh, expanding on, on Lloyd's research. That's all. You know. Yeah, yeah, it's very substantial stuff. I thought I'd probably got to re-listen to that about four more times <laughs> to get it through to me, but uh, 
Oh, yeah, I want to read what uh, Tim was talking about, too, and uh, get into that a little bit more. So in, in light of what I'm going to do tomorrow. Uh, Boy, that's, what, a good, that's, that's a good thing for you to do if you got a court parent showing up is uh, go to that Tetley uh, 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 website and, and read that over and over. Okay. And you'll see exactly what's going on in there, and, and it it gives you an idea how to deal with it. It may very well be, be if you just bring it up to them. It uh, uh, is this Admiralty Law? Uh, what, what are you doing? What what is this court here? You know, and they say, well, this is uh, Common Fleas Court, Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. Oh, uh, okay. Uh, but is there what's the nature of the law operating here? Absolutely, of course, in that respect. Uh, yeah. So at uh, that point, do I, do I say, well, address? it's uh, rules of the court, you know, and this and that. They, they, I mean, they'll say anything they have to to avoid the the true issue, uh, because they 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 not only don't want you to know it, they don't want their minions to know it. Naturally. That our, that are yeah, there the working profession. with them day in and day out because. It, it, those folks are no different than we are, and they see stuff go on in those barfly private courts day in and day out that it, it doesn't set right with them all the time. And uh, uh, not everyone, but but maybe most of them. And and they start to get a real idea about what's really going on in there. They're going to find another profession. Say. So there's no need to address the fact that they're you know there's they're seizing in persona and or in res in this case. I don't have to even bring that up so much as just knowing what they're doing and then cool. finding a way like what you're saying coming into it from the point of view of a court that's a higher law and and uh, diffusing it so to speak. Well, I, I, I'm not saying it won't do any good for you to bring those things up because in fact that's what Tetley is doing, explaining okay. to you what they're doing in there and how they're doing it. Uh, they speak of the, He speaks to the res. When he speaks to the res, he's talking about the man and the living spirit. Mm-hmm. See? Not the name. And, and the different terminology he uses is in, in, in punctuation marks, uh, uh, different uh, things. Uh, he's clearly talking about two or three different statuses. Now, let me take that back. Uh, Timothy says he doesn't really refer to the man and living spirit. Uh, he, in, in persona, he, didn't he mention that as far as being the, the, the yes. vessel itself, the boat? Okay. Yeah. Uh, he, he's talking about the, the 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 person and also the name. Okay. Let's see, uh, there's at least two different... Uh, Individuals, different entities that he's discussing there, and uh, he's got. <coughs> excuse me, he, he has it all laid out, <laughs> all the references to back everything up. He's a, a smart cookie. That yeah, bar, bar fly. Got that. <coughs> got that impression. Mm-hmm. So, what I guess I'm confused on so, is that so how just, is it just that? bringing those issues up? He's talking about explaining to you uh, may shut the court down. He may throw the case out. Uh, Only because I don't, of why it's, I, it's a, a conflict well, he, and that was one more 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 insane than the other. Like, okay, so 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 they're so they're, they've captured the vessel, so to speak, and they've and they've they've, uh, they've gone after this thing under the pretense that it's it's uh, commerce based. And they, they, they've, they've gone too far. Is that what's happening here? They've gone too far in the fact that they've taken well, his physical body as surety? Yeah, they can't they can't uh, attach the the owner of the vessel. Oh, okay. So they're, they're, they're blurring the line between private and, and, and public in that respect. Yep. That they're, yes, they're they are. They're taking the human body, or not the human body, they're taking the, the man, and they're, they're collaborating that with the, the fictitious entity. Well, what goes with the body, the living spirit? They can't do that. They cannot imprison that spirit. Okay, and so is one in this respect is is it illegal in their in their arena to do oh, that? Oh, sure, in admiralty law, I, I just that's what I meant when I said they can't okay. uh, uh, attach 
the owner of the vessel. They can attach the vessel and the cargo. They can't attach the crew, <laughs> and they can't attach the car, the captain. He's just the bus driver. Okay, I got it. See? Yeah, I guess I was confused with, with how um, Tim was explaining that, not because Tim wasn't explaining it rightly, <laughs> but it's that um, I couldn't quite tell if... Um, yeah, it's, 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 it seems very difficult to uh, comprehend uh well, for what it's worth, and I don't even know why. It, but <laughs> it, it is. Uh, we we probably spent 15 hour or more hours this week dealing with that subject okay. between him and I. Yeah. Uh, hey, Dave, I got a call now. Hello? Yeah? I got a call now, Dave, with this young man here. Hey, it's very simple. There's nothing hard about it. Corporation can only engage corporation, okay? So what your friends did, you see... The system runs on assumptions, presumptions, and imaginations. That's what they run on. They assume, presume, imaginate that you're a corporation, and it stands as true until rebutted. Okay. Well, the, so they're not they imagining build, it. They they have they a build, cer- they have a certified document with your footprints on it. What they failed to do it. is. Uh, they failed to let the the men and women in the dre- in the black dresses. Uh, know that, uh, that that they're not a corporation. So it's simple. There's nothing hard about it. Yeah, <laughs> and that makes a lot of sense the way you said it. I mean, again, it is it's corporation against corporation, and uh, and that that makes a lot of sense. So what they're dealing is they're crossing their own line, so to speak, when they bring in you know demand into this. Well, when you know who you are. That's what my, uh, Rice McLeod, uh hammered into everybody for, what, 15, 20 years, knowing who you are. When you know that, and then uh, you, you tie in this admiralty uh, operation that they're running there involving a vessel, uh, you can bring it down. You, you, you're bringing up issues... Uh, that they don't want discussed there. They they just absolutely do not. Isn't that what what that was describing when when Tim was breaking this down? He was saying that only in U.S. Uh, situations or jurisdiction, or whatever, that do you see them uh, you know attacking? I'll use that word uh, both uh, both both aspects of this. Okay, yeah. uh, RAM and persona. So that's being well, it's unique in the respects. That is that because they made up their own rules naturally, and of course they they decided that that's fair in in you know in, in their arena. Or I mean, well, you go to doing, Canada, and this they, may not be the case. Yeah, they're right doing now. the same thing in Great Britain. So that's Canada too. Okay. It's um, but it, but Tetley clearly spells it out there to you and explains that it, their uh, jurisdiction is not only on the sea, it's on the land also. And it's admiralty. Uh, he's laying yeah. it all out for you right there. I understand that. Yeah, I understand that. David. Well, good. Yeah, I'm just reading the deal on that. Yeah, I highly recommend you read that article. Definitely. And if you understand this information, that article does nothing but put it into a textbook form. You'll see it all. And you're going to post this uh, article at one point, I'm I'm assuming? Maybe before I lay my head down tonight, if I get uh, the... Oh, I already have the link. Yeah, I've I've, I've got his... I'm I'm looking at the website, but I don't know if I have this specific article yet. You know, but I'll go through a lot of his material. I haven't looked at it, the link that uh, that was put up here earlier to see if that is the one. I'll look at it and I'll post it in the file section on the Google group, and then I'll email it uh, into the discussions there. Yeah, you think uh, that if I if I need to, maybe later on in the week or so, I could uh, you know brush up on a few things with you if necessary. Email you a few questions if I need to. Oh. I know you love doing that. <laughs> uh, I, you know what I'd love to 
to be uh, at your side to this. I would like that too, actually. Yeah. <laughs> if I, would, I had my I'm way, you, yeah. if, if I had my way, I would I would be doing that for everyone that uh, is dumb enough to <laughs> to think they need such a thing. Uh, unfortunately, uh, there's, there's only a little bit of dumb Dutchman butter to spread around. And, uh, using butter <laughs> where it probably doesn't apply, but but well, didn't uh, Joshua go in with Caleb? I mean, didn't the crew always walk in twos? Yeah, it's just there's still only much, only so much butter to <laughs> spread around on the toast. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'll yeah. go easy on you. Yeah, I, sure. I get, I do occasionally get burned out. I mean, this week I didn't even know. It. Well, it's not unusual for me not even to know what day of the week it is. I I just don't have a perception for such things. I I know when it's Sabbath Eve and uh, need to start lining things up for uh, one hour before uh, dusk. But uh, the rest of the time, I, I just really don't pay any attention to it. And, uh, I tried to set up a conference for Thursday, and I would night and I did it uh, Thursday night <laughs> it was really for Friday yeah. hey, wait it's Monday today sorry <laughs> yeah. yeah I do that I definitely do that well that that that's good wraps up about everything again just back to that other uh, bunny trail question that was inspired earlier tonight was just that when when trying to pay you know a, a silly little traffic ticket of some sort here. I mean, if I do the conversion for them and send them a, a money order, um, what do you suppose would be the outcome of such a thing? I don't know. Life imprisonment execution. I'm going to handle that. <laughs> here, I, David, if I could, I'd like to convey a story. Go ahead, my All right. friend. All right. In answer to your question, I pose this story to you. A mortgage release was received, and the mortgage release stated for know all men by these presents, blah, 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 in the amount for consideration of all right title, blah, 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 the consideration received in the amount of one dollar. Now, there was no symbol for the peso. It was completely spelled, the two words, one dollar. Now, as the story goes, I don't recall ever paying just one dollar. I recall paying many several thousand dollars, quote unquote. Now, you tell me what was being um, told to me on that piece of paper. For valuable consideration of one dollar, this mortgage is released. When did I give the dollar? Who is eligible to pay a dollar? What does the dollar represent? It's on the same magnitude as one ounce of silver. So what does that story say? Was it the many thousands of quote-unquote dollars that were tendered that released the mortgage? Or was it simply one dollar that was tendered to release the mortgage. What's the answer to that question? Hmm. Curtain number one. Somebody better jump in on here on this one. <laughs> no, I'm, no, you, you, I'm no, and, and here's why I'm saying this, because you asked for David Clarence's time, and that's good and well, but I want yeah. you to get this yourself. You have to get this yourself. It cannot be told and learned as in a classroom like I see my children have to say memory work every week, two times a week, memory, memory, memory. They don't want to know that stuff. you got to get it. You've got to get it yourself. This is not that type not of that stuff. Type of... I think that's why no. this, the public school system does that. I, I want you to understand this for yourself. Because once you understand that story yourself, you you will have the ability to take care of business. Was it one dollar or several thousands? It was one dollar. What what side of this coin is eligible to pay one dollar? 
is it the that public? would be the, the private side of it because it represents there's, the 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 silver part. There you go. You have two. There's two sides to every coin. There's the heads and the tails. The obverse and the reverse. Mm-hmm. The the obverse is the public side. The reverse is the private side. It only took the private side one dollar to release that mortgage. But how much did it take on the private side to release that mortgage? It all comes down to the same piece of paper. What meaning does that piece of paper have? Legal tender, all debts, public and private. What's being held? Who's holding it? What authority does he or she have? That's the whole answer to the question right there. Because it only took $1 to release that mortgage. So what dollar are we talking about? There you go. It may be the, uh, turning those bills over on the green side, and and it may be another argument for this uh, peso and dollar is uh, in the paperwork, uh, if you're going to follow it up with the argument, you wouldn't say just one dollar. You would say the green back side of that dollar. That's the private side. You need to. We need to make a, a a stance on that. Take a position on which, which, which sector we're operating in in that respect. The, the cashiers are turn are trained to turn everything right uh, right side up. I noticed that. I think and, and deliver and, your money to you. Yeah, and put it in their drawers, not the green side, the front side, the with the, with the numeral the one, five, ten, twenty, fifty, or a hundred in it. So knowing knowing what this represents in that respect on the private side, if you're going to uh, uh, actually pay uh, a debt, not discharge it, then how would you convey that to the recipient, say E470 or Comcast or whomever it may be? You would you would say I tendered 100 U.S. dollars on the green side. Okay. Okay. Uh, the private side. Not. And if you're not, not giving him cash, if you're giving him a money order or. Well, or no, you. Uh, well, uh, you can say that you paid for the money order with so many U.S. dollars, uh, green side up. Should you afford tend, a copy you or a scan of that? It to them. What? Would a scan be appropriate or something like that? I mean, have, a, have you, an actual visually proof of that. Are you? Uh, you don't want to be scanning U.S. currency. <laughs> you, you, you're, okay. you're committing a currency violation, counterfeiting, potentially counterfeiting, doing that. Good to know. Yeah. Uh, if, if you just say U.S. dollar, they may regard that as the as the as the black side with the serial number on it. Mm-hmm. I, I, that just came to me. Yahweh just gave that to me. Turn okay. it over and describe it as the green side. And being ten, being tendered, you tendered the green side of the currency, green side up. Okay. Right. You don't have Yeah, I guess that's what, I'm, that's what I was asking was the method of, of how you handle that. Because how do you make a distinction from acting as private or public in the uh, in, in the in the uh, arena of currency itself, like you know federal notes? That's what I was asking is how do you how do you take a position on that? Well, in, in practically speaking, if, if if Timothy's right on his perception of this, and and he's been hundred percent right on his perceptions <laughs> yeah. since I've met him, uh, he probably is on this one also. It doesn't really take anything away from the other researchers, and such as uh, Eustace Mullins, uh, Yahweh rest his living spirit. Uh, it just expounds on it. It's. Uh, we, see the what you're up against in the court, or you're up against dealing with them, is the is the subconscious conditioning of your mind. Right. That public. we regard them as uh, authorities, and that is a real court and things like that. that. That's where the struggle is taking place. There, it's not what that barfly is saying. It's the image he represents that you've been programmed to believe is a certain thing that you're struggling against. The imaging. Uh, the same way would appears to be for the money, everything. 
turn, turn it over and look at the other side. Flip the coin over. You know. Yeah. Yeah. David, you, you, oh my goodness, you're right about that bill. Of course I'm right. Have you ever heard me <laughs> be wrong about anything? David. I've been listen. hanging out with a, one of the smartest guys <laughs> I've ever met. <laughs> David, you just, that, that's it. That is it. Because you're tendering, I, tendering the green, the green yes, side. Yes, that's the private. No, listen. But do, I, do I get a bottle of champagne for that? A bottle of Asti. <laughs> you know, I was thinking about that. You know, using the serial number in the registered mailing. But no, that mortgage release had no serial number and no thing such as that. It just read one dollar. And now you read this on the front. If we're looking at this phrase respectively, this note is legal tender for all debts, public and private. So public comes first. That's the that's the obverse. That's what we're looking at on the face. And then the private is the reverse, the backside. Isn't that interesting? On the one ounce fine silver. The one ounce fine silver till day one dollar is not found on the obverse of the coin. It's on the reverse, the tail side. I, you think you 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 just hit it. You got it. That back side is the private side. Yahweh so that, gave it. Yahweh, Yahweh Father gave it to me. So be it. Just now. That number. So I'll let you know how it goes then. I think I'll uh, <laughs> I'll tell you how it works. If it was me, I would attach a one dollar to that get, registered mailing. Get get in the habit, folks, of turning all your currency around and offering it green side up. Yep, one dollar. It's not likely that the average anyone's going to know what the heck you're doing. Oh, they're no, not. No, but when you, if it was me and I was attaching it to a registered mailing, I, it would be green side up. Paper clip to the paperwork. Well, help me out on that statement. I'm 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 lost. When you say registered mailing, are you saying sending a federal note through the mail? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I thought at one point that was illegal. I didn't know. No, it's not illegal. No, okay. it wouldn't be illegal. This okay, note well that, is... that that puts into perspective. <laughs> Do you have any right idea there? how much like currency it. goes is delivered by UPS and FedEx and the U.S. Post Office every day? I'm um, sure it's insane, but I didn't know if it was like something you wouldn't want to do. No, it's perfectly legal. Okay, they're I gonna, didn't know. They're going to know it's in there by the scans and that strip that that's in the currency. That's fine. It's not and against that's law. Why it's sent, that's why it's sent registered mail. And you declare the value. That is and correct. There you go. That, now that makes when, perfect when sense. It, when you easy. when you write that in that in that receipt, make a notation green side up. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that receipt. makes a lot of difference right there, in my understanding, is when you send them that note, green side up, and you make a note next to it, I think that's driving it home pretty accurate. Yeah. This note is legal tender for all debts, public and private. You can mail it. You can saute it. You can put it in an oven. That's it. That's the last time I'm going to reference, reference a, a U.S. dollar in a document that doesn't say green side up. Green side is tendered. Thank you, Timothy. Reverse showing. Yes. Yep. And you use that word tendered. Yes. For that, that purpose. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. nope. when, when they accepted it. <laughs> they accepted it the way it's tendered. That's mm -hmm. correct. Un un unless they object. So naturally, I would, I would go and I would do the conversion, and and let's say the amount was three hundred and twenty dollars, which is actually what it is with late fees to uh, drive on that street. <laughs> you can believe it. Uh, then I do the conversion and send them twenty seven dollars and or twenty seven fifty. In fact, is that kind of what I'm looking at doing? Remember what I said. Remember what I said. Thousands were paid on the public side, yet on the private side, one dollar. One dollar is all it takes. One dollar is all it takes. One dollar, one silver coin could buy 
could pay off everything. Done. It's over. One dollar. One dollar. Yeah, makes sense. It's scary to think that we could be purchasing some things this way, <laughs> paying off some stuff. Well, one dollar. Fantastic. If you're going to send a a, a certified check, uh, bank money order, um, I always use U.S. Postal money orders. When describing that payment, make sure you state in there that you tendered so many U.S. dollars green side up to the clerk at the post office, and she or he accepted it as you tendered it. Okay. That. Yeah, I guess I'm I'm a little bit lost on the on the concept of it being one U.S. dollar paid thousands. I just well, just my brain trying to catch it, up to it. It, really. it has <laughs> two, it has two sides. It's it's like this seal that we use. Uh, uh, it says uh, both can't survive. Mm-hmm. Okay, that is the reverse the actual reverse seal of the Pennsylvania seal. The obverse is the front that you see them use and uh, their websites and their documents and stuff with the two horses on it, black horses. The reverse of that is that both can't survive. And the Secretary of the Commonwealth has forbid, forbid us from using that. Secretary of State, <clears throat> rather. Mm-hmm. Commonwealth of Pennsylvania, yeah. yeah. To write, tell me not to do something. <laughs> I'm like, I'm like Timothy's wife. <laughs> she's a marine too. <laughs> no, she's a housewife. <laughs> she's more <Flash> dangerous. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she's more bullheaded and more dangerous than a former marine, uh, dumb Dutchman. Yeah, the more I think about that, Timothy, man. You you tendering it, uh, silver it. side up. That's correct. The private side of that currency. They tell you right on the front. There's two facets to it. There's two sides. Yeah. One has one means one thing. The other means something else. That is correct. Timothy, didn't you mention and, the value of that? The the green side of these bills is just like a a silver dollar coin. There's no serial number on it. That's right. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to talk over you. No, 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 it's fine. Timothy was talking earlier who, who, about... Who is the, this, by the way? Your, your uh, person? Ezra. Ezra, okay. Yeah, yeah. Well, I've been the guy shooting emails to you all week. <laughs> oh. You, you know, <laughs> you're really not the only one. <laughs> I didn't think so. I like to but think I remember that you're I not remember ignoring your, me. I remember your emails. Good. Good, yeah. Well, what was your question about conversion? I was bringing it up that you had mentioned earlier in the episode about the 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 value that it was something along the lines of uh, if you looked on the market, I guess something I'm terrible with this one, but seventeen dollars versus uh, a much lesser amount in pesos. So you're, you're, you were addressing the what that one ounce of silver equated on the open market, which was something like seventeen. Uh, federal uh, federal uh, reserve notes versus if it were to be uh, addressed on the public side, which was more like, uh, well, I can't remember the exact amount. One dollar on the public side is the has the same value as eight pesos. Yeah, that's what you're saying. On the private side, one dollar equals 17.62, which is the equivalent of the tilde. It's on the same um, mag. It's on the same order of magnitude as one ounce of silver. That means that one dollar is the same on the private side as a silver dollar. A silver dollar 
pays for everything. The man put a silver dollar when he filed paperwork into court. And as the story goes, as David Clarence has relayed, no judge would ever sit on that case, ever. Recuse themselves on down the line. This is the same thing as behind a silver bond. Same thing. It's the substance that's being used and its value. None of these debt notes have anything against it. They can't touch it. The public side can't touch it. It's worthless. But the silver can buy out virtually anything. It's it's just the order. Scripture talks about it. It, it, it just takes care of it. It's done. What, uh, what's the only, what's the uh, substance that kills a werewolf? Silver. Do what the so, myth says. Yeah, silver bullet. Kills the wolf. What, what does scripture say? I send you out as sheep amongst the wolves. Be wise as serpents and gentle as doves. And armed to the gills. <laughs> Spiritually know what's going on. This is a spiritual battle. It's not flesh. It's said. It's spiritual. What kills a wolf? A silver bullet. They can't touch it. It's like kryptonite to Superman. It's done. There's just something about silver. Uh, you know, there's just it's the substance, as is gold. Well, I wear enough of it. Yeah, you know, it it just it's does it kills it kills the wolf. I send you out a sheep amongst the wolves. What's being said here? Silver kills them. So kill them. That's the way I see it. Uh, Silver's before, an antibacterial too. Before uh, Bill mentions this, <clears throat> the green side of the bill says, "In God we trust." The current. I noticed that. Yeah. Yes, and it's encapsulated too, right oh, in the middle. There, there's resistor typing it in now. <laughs> what does that mean? I, like government of defense, or is in God? <laughs> uh, in God we trust is on the green on the green side of the currency, not the black side the face. And in I fact, question uh, their definition of God. Yeah. Now on the silver coin, it's it's on the face side. What's their definition of trust? Is that a trust or it, you trust in or I would, is it I a would, trust? I would suggest that since it's in all capitals, there's a trust named in God we. Exactly. I, that one. I, I would say that's the private side of the currency, and that's where your uh, your estate's held. Exactly. And, and that trust. Exactly. Mm-hmm. One of the best of Vatican's definition of God. Well, it, it's a, it's a, a fiction because it's in all caps. Corporation. Mm-hmm. Boy, it's good. You get good stuff on this broadcast, don't you? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> now, all, all the... Commerce gurus will be talking about this this week. Kennedy will be reporting it tomorrow night. Well, the the, <laughs> the alias Ken, uh, Kennedy. <laughs> well, good. Well, I'm going to keep paying attention to the to this aspect of it. And, uh, let you know how it goes on my end. Yeah. I'm going to sign out. Let someone else blab at you for a while and see what can be done. Well, I got twenty. Uh, 15 minutes left. David? So, yep. This is Lloyd. Hey. hey I got a, a I got a, there's the guy. <laughs> I, I got a comment for uh, Ezra there. Learn <laughs> to listen. Learn to listen to when Yahweh is speaking to you. I experienced it in a courtroom situation myself. He was telling me, keep going, keep going, but I didn't know what to say. But he gave me the words. 
it turns that was the that, case uh, around. That was that case 20 years ago you're talking about? Yeah. Something like that. But it yeah, still applies. Uh, I guess maybe I did. Bottom line is it still applies. We need to learn to listen. Listening can be really hard sometimes. It takes actual practice. Yes. When we think we've got answers on the human level is when we get in trouble. It's when we take a a thought or uh, a leading and follow through, not knowing where we're going or for what reason other than we're given the guidance and the direction that's when we find success. Not worldly success, but on the spiritual. The conference is scheduled to be broken down automatically in five minutes. To extend the time by 60 minutes, press star eight. I was a little bit off in that estimate by about uh, <laughs> 10 minutes. <laughs> Uh, With that, I just, I just had go. another thought here. Uh, the word one spelled out on the private side cancels out the numeral one, five, ten, twenty, fifty, or one hundred denomination on the public side. Actually, resistor. <laughs> Type that in here, hmm. Bill. Well, thanks, Lloyd. I appreciate yeah. it. Yeah, that's okay. It's okay, man. On. Thank you. Oh, you mean cancel as in to equal zero? Let, let me do. Let me do my. Uh, it, uh, that's what resistor just typed in here. The the word one spelled out on the green side uh, make may cancel out, or at least it's superior to the numeral one on the face. Uh, this is David Clarence expressly reserving all liberties. A notary on the land, York County, Nation, Pennsylvania. Uh, near the uh, uh, barfly-infested uh, Corporation County of York and Commonwealth of Pennsylvania, as uh, host for a Voice of Freedom broadcast on TalkShoe.com. And I believe I forgot at the beginning of this to thank TalkShoe for this uh, uh, resource and uh, uh, opportunity to interact with uh, all you folks and they're having our archives up. Uh, you can contact me as County Notary, all one word, C-O-U-N-T-Y, N-O-T-A-R-Y, at Gmail, that's Godmail, gmail.com. And I just got knocked off my own broadcast today. Nope, not yet. Uh, that's Godmail, and our God is Almighty Yahweh, gmail.com. And go ahead, whoever wants to uh, jump in, chime in there. Before we, David, uh, that's powerful what you said about a word being on the backside and an integer on the front because a word always has precedence over integers. A word comes from our Father. Integers are the creation of the beast. Ah, there you go. And that was a uh, resistor that Bill and on uh, New York City that typed that in there. Now, this the has one. been Yahweh for the out. first time. On the Pardon? $1 bill, it says one on both sides. Yeah, he said everybody should send him $1. Thanks. No, but <laughs> the, the word one is over the numeral one on the reverse. Hmm. On the black guy. Look, right. look on, look on, the, yep. look on the, the face of a $1 bill. All right? There's the numeral one in each of the four corners, the numeral one. You flip it around to the reverse, there's the same numeral one, but look, the word one is over the top of it, as in a stamp. I believe that's what he was saying. 
Okay. Yes. The word one is over the top. It's trumping it. It's one, yes. O-N-E. It is the word. That is correct. Yes, Thank our you. Father is the word, yes. That is correct. You got it, my friend. That that's pretty that's that's pretty cool right there. The word one is not on the front, but you flip it over, word is over the numeral. You got it. Yes, you got it. That's it. Isn't it amazing how Father always showing us all these things that have been in front of us all our lives? Out in the open, plain as day. I like how it's on a collaboration, too. We're all working together towards it. It's cool. That's what it takes. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yes, praise Yahweh, all ye that have breath, and Yeshua, Messiah. And look at a $5 bill and look at a $10 bill. The word 5 and the word 10 is not across the face on the reverse of those bills. Only on the one dollar bill is the word one across the numeral. Hmm. Same, as the, one, same as the silver coin is a one. That is correct. Mm-hmm. That silver on the back of that one dollar, that is silver. <laughs> You're, so where do we go to redeem them? <laughs> you can't redeem them. You're in the public all the time. It's when you... Uh, 